Uh, Shannon Briggs. Thank you, man. <laughs> Two-time heavyweight champ. <laughs> Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Yeah. The cannon, man. Yeah, look it's, at him, y'all. It's an honor, man. Thank you for your time. I, I Thank really you for appreciate me, it. Thank you for having me, champ. Where did where did the cannon? Everybody knows where the cannon came from, but when was that first? When when did you first get that slogan? Man, that's funny. Uh, you know, I had a couple of names over the years. You know, I think uh, one of my names was Shotgun Shannon. <laughs> you know, who gave me that was uh, what's my man's name? Man, it was a great fighter, a great legend. Man, he gave me that name. He used to call me uh, Shotgun Shannon Briggs. Man. And that was, uh, you know, I had that for a while. That was my moniker. And then they hit me with Shannon the Cannon, and that was it, you know? Well, I guess when you got, what, 53 knockouts, 37 <laughs> in the first round, I mean, yeah. you might get the, get the name uh, Cannon. Pull up uh, tab two. Boy, you could fucking hit me. Oh, man, a little something, a little something. You know, that was my whole thing in the beginning was I was a boxer as I started out, and then um, <clears throat> as I matured, you know, I started sitting down on my punches, but it was really more of a, Combination punch, I put my punches together pretty well. I, I, had, I had a speed advantage of a lot of fighters that I fought. And, uh, you know, for my for my size, the time was real fast. So, you know, now, nowadays these guys are amazing, you know. It's just a different... Well, Lennox Lewis said publicly that you were the hardest and fastest puncher he's ever dealt with. Yeah, he said that? He's publicly, <laughs> yeah. On every, like, you know, now that he, he's done or whatever. Yeah. He said, out of out of everybody I fought, Shannon Briggs could hit the hardest and the quickest. Wow. Well, if he said that, that's amazing. No, but, it's, uh, no you could Google it. Yeah, uh, that's what's up, you know. Hitting them fucking arms, though. Let's go, champ. Yeah, he was a tough fighter. He was uh, by far one of the, in my opinion, top five greatest heavyweights of all time. He, um, you know, I think he could have beat anybody on any given night of the, of the current champions, you know, past and present. You know, he uh, had a great jab. He was fearless, you know what I mean? He, um, the few times he lost probably was with his, you know, his uh, concentration probably wasn't on the fight fully, you know what I'm saying? But he was, he was, he was a hell of a fighter. Yeah, I thought, because I, we were watching him when we grew up and you and to everybody else, I thought he'd be go for a while, but I think Hollywood got to him a little bit. And, you know, like you said, the concentration wasn't there. I think he had a great reign. I think he reigned oh, yeah. for many years, you know. He um he was back and forth, you know. <coughs> Excuse me, champ. But like you, like how, <clears throat> like how do you deal with that jab? That's that fucking jab is jab, wild. Jab, jab, jab. That uh, Lewis had. Yeah. yeah, I mean you got through and cracked him, but nah, that jab is special. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> so that Lennox Lewis is, a, is a, he was a great champion. I mean you know, and it, throughout history, if you look at you put him against anybody on any given night, he could you know he could beat him. So. He was definitely one of the, you know, again, like I said, my top five, if not top three greatest of all time heavyweights, you know? My last Golden Gloves when I was a kid before I messed everything up, mm -hmm. uh, it was a guy like him who had that jab. Mm -hmm. And, and ex explain from you, because you were, I mean, fucking two-time heavyweight. How do you get through that jab? You just got to kind of take the risk. Yeah, like that. when I was doing that at like the little tiny peanut level, it was like, all right, you know, I'm, this, I'm not going to beat this jab, so I'm just going to take a chance – and, you know, you take a punishment every time and hope to hit. Mm -hmm. What is it like at that level? Like when, 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 well, no, not like in, when you're going against Lennox Lewis and that jab is constantly there. Oh, that jab how do you get pat? You just take the risk? I mean, you got to be on point. You got to slip it, catch it, <laughs> you do something. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you take a couple to the face, you got to be able to take it. You know what I mean? But he had a hell of a jab, strong, solid fighter, one of the greatest, again, one of the greatest of all times. And I love to see what you're doing. Like, I love when you're thinking, hey, you know, a lot of people do it. Like, Foreman did it with the grill. Right, right. You know, like, after boxing or still boxing, who the hell knows? Right, right. You know, you are you were thinking ahead. You know, now you got, you know, let's go champ, and you took it, and you made something of it, not just sit around, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was fortunate to always uh, have a <clears throat> some sort of marketing bug, you know, always try to keep myself relevant and, kept things going and I had to because it was part of who I had to become was to get in front of managers and trainers and in front of the people in front of the public so I always had a little marketing bug to me so <clears throat> when I started saying let's go champ you gotta excuse my voice I That's apologize right. champ when I started saying let's go champ as a mantra it was really some, to something to pick me up at a place when I was down so um, I just kept going and kept going with it trademarked it copyrighted and um I think it's helped a lot of people around the world. I know it's for a fact it's helped a lot of people around the world. Help myself. Besides myself, it's helped many people. I've met millions, not want to say millions, but I've thousands of people have seen videos of me 
uh, talking about my my story about overcoming depression, overcoming, um, you know, uh, being homeless as a teenager. And the mantra stands for that. It stands for uh, not giving up. You've been through hell, you're back. You know what? Don't don't give up. A lot of us um, around the world, people come out of prison, be incarcerated, and they have no hope. And that's what Let's Go Champ is about. Tell yourself. It's, it's telling you, Let's Go Champ. Tell yourself, Let's Go Champ. You the champ. Do it. Do it. You got to do it. You really, and what part of it too, champ, is it's motivation, self-motivation. You might not have no brother or sister. I was the only child growing up. I didn't have no siblings, you know. Um, you might have to be your own uh, cheerleader. You might have to cheer for yourself. Tell yourself, let's go, champ. You ain't got nobody else but you. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. And, then, and, that's, and that's, going, that's your drive. So that's what the, the mantra and the slogan is behind. It's about um, pushing yourself, mo- self-motivation. You the champ, telling yourself. And part of that is uh, in saying champ, we all relate to winning and, and, and being a champion, right? You might win. In life, as a kid, you start off. You want to win the spelling bee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Touch it one time. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. I never right. want it, but yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to win. You know, you want to do win something. Yeah. You know, they used to say, uh, "We're gonna sell cookies or candy." You know, and they and they would show you the brochure it, that you win. You know, in my you know, growing up, everybody had this in the scholastic system. I forgot the name of it. They must be billionaires, by the way. Oh, those yeah. damn uh, uh, that? Girl, Scout Girl Scout cookies. The, that and the candy. Remember the candy? Yeah. Oh, you uh, get the value candy. Dollar candy. candy. Yeah. yeah. It's selling now that candy. I want for. I want yeah. hard for that because <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> they never got the money though. Fuck. <laughs> Can you imagine the money <laughs> they made though? For they sure. made some bread though. And then how about the Girl Scout cookies? Yeah. Some Girl Scout cookies. 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 Yeah. Some that I didn't feel like a champ. I never felt like you know. I didn't. Re- 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 I didn't see myself as yo. You're a champion. You won. You won at something. You won at not giving up in life a long time ago and, and succeeded. And sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm a type of person, and a lot, a lot of people like me, they look at themselves and they and they harden themselves. You know, I'm very critical. I'm on myself. I'm like, damn. You know, I did this. I'm hard on myself. So I had to stop to combat com- to combat that. I had to like have a mantra, have a slogan, because every time I start thinking negative, come on, champ. And, and even calling myself champ, because uh, I, I would I would say in the black community, but it's in every community now, um, the word nigga is used so much that it's common. White nigga, black nigga, Chinese nigga, it's everybody nigga, nigga, nigga. So um, I felt like that in itself is just dumbing us down, making us feel and not feel empowered so when i started saying champ you know you know to everybody yo champ what's up champ let's go champ and kept drilling myself and you know somebody would say yo what's up my nigga i'd be like chill champ i'm not no nigga or i'm not with that you know i'm chill champ and i'd be like yo i don't really use the n-word champ they'd be like and i call them champ they'd be like oh wow you know what i mean now this is something that's been done for you know many many years especially around dc area now what but you know me and my life using it for that, telling people chill, chill, I ain't with that. You know, just trying to con- combat the negativity. And I noticed that when I hit them with that, let's go, champ. As soon as I hit them with that, they felt different. Like oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm not, I'm not using the N word. They it relax you. It make you feel good about yourself. So me myself, I was using it for that to feel good about me because I wasn't feeling good. So I started calling myself champ. Come on, champ. But you say you oh. just did that. You said, let's go, champ, with a smile and a yes, fist brother. pump. Yes, champ. <clears throat> so even in, in the toughest streets in New York, if you did that, yeah. you got that smile and yeah. kind of like the teddy bear thing. Yeah, I, I'm chilling, uh, Yeah, champ. yeah. So everybody's yeah. like, all right, and then repetition. Yeah. You know, the more repetition, next yeah. you know, one person says, another person right. says it. Yeah. So that came through, like, the depression and yes. the suicide because, yes. I mean, bro, you had it rough. Yeah. Fucking homeless. Yeah. I, I think it was on Rogan when I had heard that you went home you know, you had all your toys and your games and shit, oh, man, and everything. one day you went home and you were evicted. ColecoVision, remember that? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. ColecoVision. I had a comic book collection, champ. 
out of this world. I had like Daredevil number eight, Daredevil number fifteen. You wish I would be worth right bro, now, bro. I can't imagine, but I had. See now, this was crazy because my uncle had went to the Vietnam War, and he had for some he came back with a crazy comic book collection. So I had his collection. The, 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 then I had my cousin had a collection, and he was in the military. He was in Germany, and when he came home. I had his collection, so and then my collection. I had Star Wars, GI Joe. I had everything. And for some my reason, I love my stuff. I would keep it, and and this was my collection. So when I got evicted and we lost everything, I lost everything. And it was like I was fourteen years old, and my life just fell apart. You know what I mean? So now I'm a fourteen year old teenager, and I'm thinking about the toys I had. <laughs> and and this happened out of nowhere, right? You just came home and there was an eviction notice and it was gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it was it was uh, you know, I wasn't. I lived in a building called Atlantic Towers in Brooklyn, Brownsville, Brooklyn, Ocean Hill, the Ocean Hill section. Uh, I was born there. I was raised there until we left. You know, I moved down the hill for a while to Marcus Garvey, and then we moved back to the towers. So that's all I knew all my life, you know. It was beautiful, man. I can tell you, man. It's like the Beverly Hills of Brown. Of Brown. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can imagine, man. We had a pool. We had two basketball courts. Oh, we had grass areas. We had a barbecue pit and a little park for kids. We called it the small little park, right? It was amazing. We had a ramp that had been abandoned, but listen, it it was perfect for roller skating. <laughs> it was perfect. It was you know two levels. So we lived in this little area. That was like a little complex called Atlantic Towers in, in Brownsville. Uh, the surrounding area surrounding it was hell on earth. It was crazy. It was Vietnam, but <laughs> we we were right there. You know what I'm saying? So we got the Beverly Hills right here, dead smack in the middle of Brownsville uh, at the top of the hill. And um, it was crazy. It was great. It was amazing living there. And then uh, losing that, uh, my point was losing that was devastating to me because I had such a community here. Like such a community. Again, we had the pool. We had we all bring our bikes out to play. We all bring out our, our skates to play. It'd be like forty of us. You know what I'm saying? With skates, b- bikes, whatever we did, we all did it together. And then on you know holidays, we would go to each other's house, apartment. You know what I mean? It was twenty four stories, two buildings, and we would go from building to building or from apartment to apartment and spend a night at your friend's house. So like Christmas, we all go to this person's house, that person's house. What you get? What you get? Right. So when I left that at fourteen. It was like, damn, no more the community. And I was lost. I was sleeping here, sleeping there. You know what I mean? Now me and my mom, my mom was, you know, at the time was suffering with addiction. That's and, right. uh, you know, my, my stepdad who raised me, he was in prison. So I went overnight from, you know, Star Wars G.I. Joe to <laughs> comic books to, hey, nah, Joe, <laughs> scoot over at the shelter. You know what I mean? Or we went to relatives' crib. I stayed with my aunt uncle for about a year and a half. We stayed over at my aunt uncle's house in uh, East Flatbush. Love them. Rest in peace to uh, my uncle Levi Sorry and my aunt Kyra. Yeah, yeah. They were my um, great, great aunt and great uncle. Great people, man. They, uh, my, my aunt Kyra was like the, my, my, she was uh, someone, someone that my mother looked up to. Like a yeah. backbone. Yeah, well, no, she looked up to her coming from the South. They all came from the South, from, uh, you know, the Deep South and Virginia. When they came to New York, my aunt had a job. Then she opened up oh. a beauty salon. Oh, nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She got a, she was a, she was a businesswoman. She, was, she bought a house in, in, um, in Flatbush at the time, which was, you know, um, still had a lot of white people living there. She, she was, you know, doing her thing. And my mother looked up to her, and she, my mother came to the, came from the South, came North. And um, unfortunately, you were the party scene, pretty girl, light-skinned, hanging out, you know what I'm saying, and meeting guys. And, you know, at the time, it was fashion movie, they doing drugs, you know, a little cocaine or whatever they was doing. And, you know, my mother was a smart person. She was working. She always had money. She had a brand-new car. She bought off the, you know, she always bragged about it. I bought my floor. I bought my car off the floor right there. She, off, off the lot. Off not, the lot. Not used out the, the windows, yeah. Yeah. I bought my car. <laughs> they, they used to have a dealership. Yeah. I'm kidding you. No, no kid. Right across the street from where we live, we had a dealership. And my mother would always tell me, right from where we live, she, I bought my car from right there. Then they turned it into a beef patty spot or something like that. <laughs> But um, yeah, man, so I had a hell of a childhood, and then for that to be snatched away was traumatizing as a kid, you know what I'm saying? From going, I went to private school, you know, I went to uh, Lutheran oh, school, sure. you know, it was 50 bucks a month, but that's 50 bucks oh, a month, mm-hmm. you, know? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. you know, back in the 70s, 80s, and then it went up, but uh, then I went to, then I went to, uh, I went to Bishop Lachlan High School for a year, 
and that's a private, that's a, you know, a fluid, influential school, man, you know, in Brooklyn. And, um, you know, I went there for a bit. So I was, you know, I was, you know, I wasn't no stupid dummy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so, but, um, and then I had to lose, lose all that. And I had to go to the streets and I had to go to the public school system <laughs> and get down with the get down. You know what I mean? So, uh, I had to fit in. I had to get where I got, you know, and then doing that, it wasn't easy because it was a lot going on. It was a, it was the 80s, you know what I'm saying? And crack cocaine came out and everybody was hustling and, you know, going out of town or getting locked up. And a lot of people was boosting at the time. And I was like, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going where, where to go in this mix, where I'm going to hustle, what I'm going to sell crack or what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out of town. I was, I was literally um, looking, you know, looking for, you know, looking for work. You know, at the time I was like, yo, if somebody put me on, I'm, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? But... I was fortunate. I was I was blessed that I didn't, you know, God bless me, the angels, guardian angels, something, you know what I'm saying, that led me into boxing. And when I got into boxing, it, it gave me something that I didn't, had nothing. I had nothing. I was literally trying to figure out who I was going to go out of town with, who I was going to sell drugs for. I was literally thinking about, I went and got myself in trouble a couple of times, boosting with people, and, um, you know, I, I was like, this ain't me. You know, I was just in private school. I was just trying to figure it out, you know, thinking about going to college and now I'm hanging out in the street because of no choice. So that's a, I'm a big advocate for that now. I know I, I can remember, like yesterday, like I said, it traumatized me being a teenager and not knowing when I'm asleep, not knowing what I'm eating, let alone uh, what I'm being in the future, you feel me? If I wouldn't have found boxing, who knows where I'd be? I'd definitely be in, in jail. I'd definitely be in jail or dead, you feel me? Because I had nothing. I wasn't a good student. In school like that, you know what I mean? Especially after losing, you know, at home. We think about no books, man. I'm thinking about <laughs> what I'm, 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 I'm going to eat and sleep. This episode is brought to you by Let's Get Checked. Are you the man your father was? Recent studies have shown that men's testosterone levels have dropped substantially since the 1980s at about an average of 1% per year. Think about how old your father was when he was born. For example, if he was 30, your testosterone levels could be 30% lower than his. Low testosterone levels can have all type of health effects on men. It can affect your mood, sex drive, memory, muscle mass loss, you name it. And yes, low testosterone is more common the older you get, but it can affect men at any age. So let's talk about today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. You can order a testing kit that will be delivered to you in a discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. So... If you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com backslash mscsmedia and get 25% off your test using the code mscsmedia. The link is in the description at the top. Let's face it. After a night with drinks, I don't bounce back the next day like I used to. I have to make a choice, either a great night or a great next day. That is until I found Zbiotics. We all have busy lives these days and can't afford to waste the day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before. Zbiotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's of sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Order Zbiotics now for your summertime barbecue, weddings, vacations, you name it. Go to zbiotics.com slash mscsmedia or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use MSCS Media checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're ever unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money no questions asked. Remember, Head to zbiotics.com slash mscsmedia. Use the code mscsmedia at checkout for 15% off. 
Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. You still had that gap. So people that are watching that might be in that situation, they just ran to the library to watch this. You know what I mean? How did you navigate that time period where you didn't go and be a drug dealer on the corner, like easy money yeah. or, or go these? Yeah, you got hit boost and whatever. But I mean, you could have went a whole different route. Yeah. How did you not go a whole different route? How did how did you set your mind so you didn't? Well, you know, a few things. One was one one was um, again. I wasn't no dummy. You know, what I mean, I could. I lived in. I lived a, a decent life. I had a, a good a good life. My mother was a nurse. She had an addiction, but she was a good woman. You know, what I mean, she went to college. She she was trying to do something. And again, it's your environment. Growing up in the towers, it was an amazing community of of people, working class people. That that kids were going to schools, trying to figure out what school they was. Oh, we might, you know, five or six go to the same school. Our Lady of Loretta, St. Mark's, uh, you know, whatever, you know, private schools that was around, you know, Satellite West, you know, good schools. This is uh, Philip Sky, different schools that kids were trying to get to. And the parents, again, was working class parents from the 60s and the 70s. And here we are now in the 80s. I mean, we might have been the third generation of kids in this building, in these buildings, these Atlantic Towers, and we might have been a third generation of kids or fourth, I'm not sure, but we all, it might have been like 20 of us all the same age, in the same age group. So I always had, I, it, I had like brothers and sisters. I had my gang, but we was good kids, but we lived in the Brownsville. So you already, <laughs> but, but you still had your, your base though. You had that base, base foundation. So base. before this happened, you had somewhat of a base foundation yes. where that, you didn't want that to be in your cards. Well, nah, it wasn't in me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. in me to be stupid. You know what I mean? I was, I started packing bags working in the uh, supermarket when I was like eight, nine years old. I was packing bags Good for you. to get money. You know what I'm saying? Because I was, you know. That's what these kids need to be doing yeah, now. Yeah, they can't pack bags. We, we didn't work for the store. Like, we would just go to the lady at the, um, at the counter with the register and we'd be like, ma'am, can I pack for you? And she'd be like, yeah. yeah. And if we couldn't get somebody to, uh, a register, if it was all booked up, we would um, we would go outside and wait for people to come out and say, ma'am, can I carry it, carry it back? But what I realized about that chant was it taught me mannerism yeah. early. Thank you. Know you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. No, yeah. no, sir. I want that early in life because I knew I was going to get a good tip. tip. And, you know, but my parents taught me that as well. Me too. But then I knew... You know, you a little Jeffin, a little, little yeah, Jeffin, yeah, James. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, I had a big six foot seven grandfather that didn't fuck around. Yeah, yeah. and if he would make me work, yeah, make man. me carry bags, and, oh, I, and I learned the whole tip shit too. Hell yeah! And you know, you throw a little thing. Oh, you look absolutely beautiful today, oh, even you if you're seven hundred pounds. <laughs> you look beautiful today. Yeah, you know? Dress looks great on you. But, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You get know what the mean? door. You yeah, know, yeah. respect, respect yeah. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um. It's important. These kids today, I wouldn't say that because they might have said that about us in those days, but they taught us, hey, listen. And there's some kids that do it. Some kids today, I'm not going to say everybody, but respect is important because, again, it helps you later on in life when you may go for a job and you don't want to come in here, yo, what's up? Whoa, whoa. You know, you want to come in, yes, sir, no, sir, thank you. You want to be, you know, they want to know you ain't, a, you know, you ain't a fool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, so, and you have such a good mouth, and I, I saw a lot of advocacy that you're doing. How do you get how do you change things in these neighborhoods? Because in my opinion, the, the government wants to keep the black people in the neighborhood. And if you look at the stats, <laughs> they're giving them more money. Uh -huh. Every time they have a kid, more money. Oh, shit. When they take away the white people's stamps, they don't take away the black people's food stamps. Oh, shit. No, that's not true. Yeah, yeah that's it is. Not, okay, well, well look, look, that's it. More white people got stamps than black people got stamps. Yeah, they know, that's true. That's right, a fact. Right, right. So the stamps thing, we're not going to put no color on it because they're all poor. Poor white people, black people, when they got stamps, they poor. So we're not going to divide who get it, who don't. They poor as hell. So what can you do, ask me? What can we do to help the people? Yeah. We got to help the people. We got to keep talking to them. We got to, you know, look, you know, my approach is, but I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. I can speak for my approach. My approach has been, look, I'm just a regular dude. I'm just saying, let's go champ, because I believe that we all got something in us that can make us not give up. That's the champ. When you win, you don't give up. I wanted to give up, champ. I kid you not. It's only mad times I wanted to give up. When I was a kid, I, I, I called Suicide Hotline. I was like uh, 16, years, 15, 16 years old. After, like I told you, being evicted, I was um, depressed. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. My life had fell apart. I no longer had Atlantic Towers. 
I no longer could go to my friend's house and play with the Commodore 64 or go to my other friend's house. I had 15, 20 friends to choose from. Oh, I'm going to go ride my bike. I can't do none of that now. Now I was sleeping on couches, sleeping in the basement. I was house to house, and I was ashamed. Yeah. I was hurting. I was embarrassed. I was, you know, I lived in Atlantic Towers. Those prestigious buildings. Now, you know, people see my mother begging on Pickett Avenue one day in front of McDonald's for money, and Sorry. they brought it to me, and they told me, and people was telling me things to hurt me. To bring and you down. To bring me down. And they was telling you, your mother this, your this, that. Look at you now. And I was just sad. I was depressed. And guess what happened, though? I took all that pain mm -hmm. and I put it in the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the cannon came from. Let's right? go, champ. You feel me? <laughs> you feel, I feel you. I Let's feel. go, champ. But, and, but how did you get, because now, now, now if you say, hey, I, I'm suicidal, here's 3,000 pills and, and be a... Uh, Sheesh. Well, you know what? Well, that, I was it, young then. I was young. No, I know, but I'm, I'm yeah. saying now because, you know, I mean, we talk about it all the time, especially when we have some of these doctors in here. Right. This mental health is out of control. Oh, it's ridiculous. And then they just pill you up and pill you up ridiculous. and either make you a zombie or ridiculous. addicted to the pills. How did you get through it? How'd you get through those suicidal thoughts and, and you go on to be a two-time heavyweight champion? You do that now, they're just going to zombie you out. Okay, well, I'll tell you again, going back to that a little bit, I was around 16, 17 years old, I want to say. I got myself in some trouble, uh, boosting with some friends, and uh, went to jail for the first time. And I was in there for a couple of days, and I was like, this ain't me. <laughs> this ain't what I want to do. That was your wake-up call. Was like, this ain't what I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, it ain't what I did. But the whole thing was... It was in some ways I was looking forward to it because it was like a rites of passage. You had to go to jail in the hood to be like, okay, yo, he, oh, y'all seen so-and-so and, you know, he cool now. But I was like, nah, Shannon, this ain't you, bro. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you're going to be fighting in here and now you're going to be a jailbird. My stepdad was on the run. He raised me. He was my father. I say I call him my father. He was a, he was in my life since I was nine months old. He was in jail well, at the time on the run. My mother had got arrested and got herself in some trouble. So it was one time when I was in jail, she was in jail, and he was in jail. That's my whole family. That's my nucleus. So, you know, no brothers or sisters. So I went from where I was you know what I'm saying, to where I was. We was all in, you know, in some type of, you know, I might have been there for two or three days at this time, but my life had fell so low that I, I didn't want to live. And I remember I was with a friend. I'm going with no friend. I was with a friend, I, so I thought. And he had a gun on the table. And he was like, uh, you know, I, was, I, I, I called, you know, it was house phones at the time, you know. I called, like, suicide hotline or some shit. I was bugging, like, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't know what to do. Like, I was going, I know I had to go to court for for this and for that. And I was like, damn, you know, I had, in some ways, it was so tr crazy because I had went to visit my father growing up in jail many times. So I kind of knew what the smell, what it smelled like in the day room, you know what I mean, in the visiting room. I knew everything. I knew because it was somewhere I, where I was going to go. Now, when I go back to my friends at home, they don't really know my whole life that's going on in my apartment. But I think some people know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, obviously, we get evicted. We lose the house. My pops is on the run. And um, so I kind of grew up thinking I'm young now. I'm 15. I'm, this, is all I, this is the only life I know is I'm figuring I'm going to go the same route as him and I'm going to be in jail. I'm going to go to do some years for some stupid shit I did. And I'm like, damn. And I'm like, I should just end it. And I was with a dude, and he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. He's a like, nice friend, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he slid, the, he slid yeah. the gun over to me. He was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Jesus Basically, Christ. like, if I, I understand what you're going through. And I looked at him, and I was, I, was, I always remember this wow. clear as day because um, – I'm thinking, damn, he ain't even kid was in his apartment too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah. cops would have came. You know what I mean? He, he was like, yeah, right. right? Come on, dude. He wasn't even thinking things <laughs> nah, through. He wasn't. Like, so, if he does this, what am I going to do? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? For clean real, up that man. Mess, man. For real. So I was like, damn, thinking back now, I'm like, wait a minute. What was he going to do if I would have just said, all right? <laughs> so, um, you know, but, you know, it's a walk past that, obviously. And going through ups and downs, you know, and seeing my mom fall to where she fell and 
And then my dad eventually died in prison. You know what I'm saying? That, he died in there. And, thank you. And then my mom died on my birthday. I overdosed. All these different times of these these hurts and these pains that I was dealing with. Um, you know, I ain't know what to do. I ain't know what to do except um, you know, I, I I was I was unfortunate because being the only child, I didn't have any brothers and sisters. I had the community around me of friends and all that. But I was always looking for friends. My friends, my friends, my friends. I come on, my friends. Let's go, mommy. My, my friends over there. My friends, my friends. And that hurt me later on in life because I was always bring a friend, put somebody down with me. You know what I mean? My friends, my friends. Oh, come on. Get an entourage. This is my friend. Oh, no, he, he cool. That's my friend. That hurt me more because it hurt me deep because I got to see every time out. And I didn't learn my lesson that people are can be nasty. People can be mean. They can hurt you. They can take from you. They can see the weakness in me. See, and I looking back, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to, you know, deal with it until recently that people seen that in me. They're like, damn. I wonder, but I was, I, I wonder what they think. Like, damn. He a nice guy. He looking for a friend. But I'm friendly with everybody. And it was always my nature. You know what I'm saying? It was always my sense of kid. My mom used to say, I'm going to beat you. She said, she said, oh, she said I'm going to beat you. I come home. Oh, where, you, where, your son, where your friend? What did it say? Where did I say? Oh, I gave it to my friend. Why? Where you was? Oh, he ain't have one, ma. But stupid, now you ain't got one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I was friendly. I was, uh, you know, some people are naturally friendly. And, um, it took me a long time to deal with that. So I went through I went through life at different periods saying, fighting myself. Stop being so nice. Stupid. You gotta stay, you know what I mean? They're gonna take you for soft. But I ain't soft. I could fight like a bear. You know what I'm saying? But people are gonna take you as soft if you're friendly. I'm just nice naturally, you know what I'm saying? So I always had to put on sometimes a persona, you know, oh, let's go, champ. But you know, I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm a I'm a teddy bear, but I'm still a bear. <laughs> you feel me? So I, I went through the same thing too. Like when I first had gotten, so I wanted a friend too, mm -hmm. and it took me forever to realize it because I didn't want to believe it either. Yeah. So I'd have every Tom Dick and Harry around me. Yeah, he's my friend. Oh, right. come on, come on, come on. You want to go to see the Lakers game? Come on, come on. But then when something would happen, they weren't around. Nah, ain't none of but that. I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I and this would happen for years yeah. and years. Only child syndrome they call. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. It would just keep happening and happen. Yeah. And. And these guys are so good, Shannon. And I know you know better than me. They like, it's like if you're going out to a club and you see a girl, we used to, this is a long time ago, <laughs> right? We used to know if a girl had a daddy issue, mm. right? And we used to be like, oh, okay. She's not going to be a problem. You know what really? I mean? It's going to be easy. Okay. Like, you know, we could see how she acts, if she's insecure, shit like that. And I realized that these guys knew that they could get to me. Because I was looking for that friend. Mm. And next thing I know, when, when my bank account's empty Sheesh. because I'm taking care of everybody. <laughs> yeah. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right. They are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shave your signature beard look. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code MSCS Media for 20% off and free shipping. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to all the stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a monster of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all with one guard. No more messing around in drawers, this color one, that color one, all with one guard. Plus, it's waterproof, so you can shave in the shower and avoid all that hair in the sink. The Pro Kit doesn't end there, though. First, there's the beard shampoo and conditioner. You need to remember your hair is different. Next, Manscaped's beard oil. Tap it off with beard balm. The Pro Kit also comes with three different gifts, a beard brush, comb and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code mscs media at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com use the code mscs media let's go Chad. i know i did it multiple times and i it took me a long time to realize yo champ you got a problem you take on too many friends you know um 
<laughs> you bring home pets. I bring her any any rabbit, <laughs> raccoon, you know, that, you know, anything. Oh, come on in, come on in. And you know, I, I so I am. But again, it's it's I, you know, they call it the only child syndrome. Uh, growing up, and you know, it was another thing. I think part of it is I had everything to me. I like I said, I had GI Joe. I had everything, comic book collection. Oh, and it was time. He man, man, had he everything. Man. You know, he man. I wasn't really on he man. I was on he man. I, I was a GI Joe. Star Wars was my thing. Still, I still rock with Star Wars. But um, you know, I would always share. I was always giving to a lot of people, you know, because I had everything. So people have the misconception that our only children are spoiled. I gave away because I wanted friends. Or oh, what time? As soon as my friend come over, what time you got to leave? My mother like, boy, just relax, just hang out, hang out with your friends. Okay, what time they got to leave, mom? Because we we got we gonna play this, we gonna do that. Just play, man. Just have a good time. So that 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 for a long time was my downfall. Letting in everybody, letting pe- letting in strangers and letting people close to me that shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? They turn out to bite you. Them same animals you bring home, yeah. they can't help it. It's still a raccoon. <laughs> you know right, and you can forgive them, right? Right. They're innocent. Nah. But when it's a person. Nah, I can't yeah. forget no, even if a raccoon bite me, you got to go. <laughs> See, that's why I still feel bad for the animals. Nah, you know, if you bite he, me, you got to go. You got to go, yeah. <laughs> but the other ones you want to, you know, do yeah. other things with. So then, how, I get when did you see Mike? You saw Tyson what when he, I was young, man. I was young, and that's I what see, got you sparked for boxing. Nah, right? nah, that's nah. not what got me into boxing. What got me into boxing was watching Mike in the eighties. Uh, you know, I had lost my home, and we had I lost my apartment in the towers, and and for a while I didn't go back. I want to say almost like a year and a half, two years, which seemed like a, a, a eternity. I didn't go back around here. Um, I was embarrassed, you know what I mean. And then when I did go back. Uh, slowly I went back and I just kind of dealt with the the embarrassment, you know what I mean, yeah. of damn, we, I, I shouldn't have went back because uh, although, you know, it was genuinely my friends and I loved them, it was just different. And it was no, 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 no count, you know, not, no knock to them. We was kids, they did nothing to, to say, oh, you got evicted, this, that, and third. It was just that I shouldn't have went back in a sense, and they can't change time and I don't regret anything, but because I was hurting myself. I was going back there and saying, man, I'm, I'm going to come back here one day. One day I'm going to get an apartment back here one day. Or one, one, You were just taking that knife and twisting it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, a sucker, I'm a sucker for pain. Yeah. Right? So I went back, and, I, and and doing that, I didn't live there no more. And uh, got into an incident that I would eventually stopped me from going back around there for a while. But it was all meant to be because that's where it led me to boxing. I wasn't no kid that was going to be no boxer. I wasn't no kid that was in the boxing, in the sports. I can't dribble. I can't hit a baseball. I can't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, you know what I mean? But when when I got the gloves, um, I had some hands. My hands could fast. Um, I could see punches coming at me. You know what I mean? Just and, naturally. Yeah, naturally. And, uh, you know, I got a good re- – my reflexes is, is crazy. And – um. I realized that thinking back when even when I first started, we we had the gloves outside, you know, messing around, and I punched a, a guy in the face, and he had blood in his mouth, and it was blood. And he was like really trying to get me, and I really in, like was like enjoyed wow. it. Yeah, like, uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. His mouth is actually bleeding. I'm gonna do this more and more. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, yo. Well, it kind of feels that. I mean, I'll admit yeah. it. For me, you know, I was just a little peanut again. Yeah. It fills that hole in a way. For me, it, yeah. for me, it filled a it's hole. Adrenaline. It's yeah. adrenaline. I started boxing. I, I was like, yo, this is something that I made that happen. He ran into the punch. I did this. <laughs> I made it happen. You know. And then I got I fell into it and it saved my life, champ. It gave me an opportunity. So going back to Mike, you know, Mike was on television, I want to say 87, 88, 86. And we was watching Mike in 85, 86. And I was like, he from Brownsville. And I was like, wow. And then he lived uh, around the neighborhood as well. Then he moved down the hill. I lived, I moved down the hill. So our lives just was, and so you know, so many things identical to how we both grew up, you know, like, he had his mom, unfortunately, his mom had, had problems. Uh, he lived up the hill, I lived up the hill. He went down here. I didn't go to jail. He, I didn't go to, you know, reform school to jail. He wound up going to the Catskills and training and, and, and working with Custom Model and Teddy Atlas. 
guess who my first trainer was? Teddy Alice. Teddy Alice. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So it's so many different things. He he lived up the hill, then he moved down the hill. I lived up the hill, then I moved down the hill to Marcus Garvey. Then we moved back up the hill. He That's moved funny, up. right? You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's so many similarities and things that we look back on and that I say, wow, you know. Um, but what's, what's really crazy is, this is really crazy. We... My grandmother lived in Brownsville. She lived on the, uh, the the other side of Brownsville. She lived in Noble Drew, which which we call Plaza, Noble Drew Plaza. She lived she lived in Plaza. Uh, she moved in there. I want to say I want to say seventy six, seventy seven. I'm maybe earlier. Um, Riddick Bow lived upstairs from me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, everybody's from Brownsville. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy? No, no, no. Yeah. Park, no, like like we in this building right now. Yeah. He he lived upstairs from me, Riddick oh, Bow. And then Zade or, or what the fuck is Zab that? Judah. Yeah, Zab Judah. Zab Judah? Brownsville. Yeah. His Brownsville. father, Brownsville. Yeah. Curtis Steven, Danny <laughs> Jacobs. Yeah, man. What's I'm like working on some right water now. there. Yeah, you couldn't listen. That's what I was like telling people. It's like, like a hall. It's like a hall. <laughs> That's fame right. over there. It's, it's got to be water, man. in the water. It's got to yeah. be something in the water. Wow. I don't want to interrupt you, but what is it in Brownsville? Because when, wow. I was, when I was reading everything, I, I, I had to look... Shannon, I had to look three times to make sure I was reading right. Everybody was in Brownsville. I was like, wow. Some names. Yeah. yeah. What is it about Brownsville? Just, man, it's, it's always tough. been a tough area, man. I'm, I'm actually right now, I'm uh, working on something right now with uh, Michael Rappaport. Oh, shit. Yeah, great. Michael Rappaport and uh, He's funny as Joe funny. Ankia, Ariel, the team, Playhouse, you know, Playhouse Pictures. We're working on something right now that's in production, pre-production for a, a whole documentary docuseries let's go champ let's go yeah, champ yeah. thank you brother yeah champ we work on about that that's that that question what is it in brownsville it's always been a tough neighborhood man oh, be always great. been a tough neighborhood you got to get down for your crown champ you feel me only tough survive and it was always been it's always been that way i think the change now is that back in the days we had to fight we fought with our hands now the kids can't fight they don't know how to fight no more yeah. They don't know how to fight. They don't fight. They don't fight. I don't care say they don't know how to fight because yeah. everybody know how to fight. But they don't fight with their hands no more. They're going to kill. They're going to shoot. So that changed the whole dynamics. But in Brownsville, in the 70s and 80s, we could fight. Everybody, the girls, the gods, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, everybody in the box. <laughs> you can see fights outside, whole families. You know what I'm saying? You see a whole family. At a picnic the, table. Yeah, the kids. <laughs> every the, night. Kids, the kids. <laughs> and you see every every weight, every age, every weight class. They fighting, you know what I'm saying? But um, now it's about getting a gun or something like that. So, But, uh, you know, we're going to change that channel. We're going to open up these these boxing schools, Brownsville Boxing Academy, okay. on the way. Uh, you, thanks man. to the team. Um uh, so many people I don't want to you know say too much yeah like, don't don't blow yeah, I don't, you know I apologize don't give me an excuse to hound you to come back and tell me <laughs> yeah. more about it and get us that yeah, yeah man yeah. I'm sorry I interrupted I just the, the names popped in from the other night when I was looking how many names but uh, you were talking about like how you and Mike were like on this path where just somebody kept hitting each other fact fact yeah that was uh, that's amazing how uh if you look at Mike's, my, his life and my life, you know, totally different in a lot of ways, but at the same time, the early beginnings, we're from the same neighborhood. Uh, we both trained with Teddy Atlas. We both came from broken homes. Um, fortunately, you know, uh, I didn't go down the path of prison. Uh, fortunately, you know, again, I, like it, was a, it was right there. It was an option, and it was either that prison or death. You know what I'm saying? There was no other options. I I, I, I did try to go into the military, uh, but uh, I didn't have a high school diploma, and I don't think at the time they was taking GEDs. I went and got my GED, and I, I don't think they was taking that. So um, that didn't pan out. So it wasn't much for me, champ. I say that to say that, that uh, boxing fell in my lap in some ways, whereas a got friend of mine said, yo, let's go to a gym, you know, and I was like, nah. And, you know, he was like, I seen you getting into fights around here. I see you got some hands. You know, what I, mean? I got a little scraps. Cause I went now. Now I went from Bishop Lackla High School to the one of the worst schools ever <laughs> created. <laughs> I mean, I took one of the worst schools ever in the history of schools. Yeah. I went to Wingate High School in the eighties. I'm telling you, champ. You never seen nothing until you went to Wingate in the eighties. I heard. I heard. I never seen it, but I heard. I'm telling you, champ. Like, it was like K Rikers Island. Like KRS said, <laughs> yeah. KRS said in one of his lyrics, he said the dreads in Brooklyn was crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, that, and, and I lived it, man. I'm telling you, the 80s, it was no joke, champ. It was no joke. But uh, I went to high school, you know, then, and uh, 
whew, I, you know, I fit, I got, I, 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 I felt my way. You know, I was cool with people, people. Uh, you know, I wasn't on nothing, but I had my little fights. And one of those fights, a couple of those fights, uh, you know, a dude that I knew, he seen the fights and was like, yo, you get busy with your hands. He was like, yo, whatever, whatever. We made a bet. I vaguely remember we made a bet about a girl or something like that. <laughs> and I lost the bet. And he was in the bet. The losing the bet was to go with him to a gym. And I went with him to a gym and I fell in love, champ. When I walked in, I couldn't believe it. I had never been to a boxing gym. And when I walked in, um, just the smell, the smell, the bag was, speed bag was going crazy. The the bell, the bell was ringing. Uh, the radio was on loud. It was the Starry City Boxing Gym. And I was like, damn, this is home, <laughs> you know? And I was excited. So uh, prior to that, a couple of years or so prior to that, or two, a year or two prior to that, I had did some street boxing with some friends in the neighborhood in Atlantic Towers. And I was like, yo, I like this thing. But again, it stayed away from me, whatever, until I went to a gym with a, you know, on, on this lost bet. And that was crazy in itself, that day getting there on a bus, because this dude had a car. <laughs> well, I was like, what's up? Where's your car? He was like, nah, we taking the bus. His car broke or something. I was like, what? <laughs> I know I ain't going now. <laughs> so he, he talked me into it. We went. And um, and uh, it was the beginning of a new life for me, man. And I, and I ain't going to front. For a long time, I was fighting not to do it. You know, I was trying to get... I worked everywhere, champ. I had jobs, man. Let me just give you a list of my jobs. Yeah. Okay. I worked at a, a, a supermarket called Royal Farms, which was changed to consumers, right? Mm -hmm. I packed bags. I sold newspapers. I shoveled snow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I handed out flyers. Um, I did demolition and construction. Uh. I started at nine, okay? By the time uh. I'm 15, I done did all these jobs, but... Damn, that demolition no joke, right? A what? Demolition was no joke. <laughs> I did... Yo, listen, I did... Um, I worked for Meals on Wheels. Oh, shit. I, I worked at a printing company. Uh, I worked at a place called South Street Seaport at a store called Everything Yogurt. You know, <laughs> scooping ice cream. Can you I can't Everybody say you're scooping <laughs> ice cream now. All the others like can see the ice yeah. cream. He's no, gone. I, don't know about yeah. that. I, I was, I was like, selling ice cream. Would you like sprinkles on that? Oh uh, <laughs> man, don't do me like that, Jack. You know, like, <laughs> hey, you didn't put enough sprinkles on. Oh man, <laughs> no, like... man. I did everything. I, I paint. You know what I'm saying? I did uh, move furniture, moving. This is all. I started working. I was like eight, nine years old, Good champ. For you, though. Oh, yeah, good for, good for you. Nah, man, they worked me to death, champ. Yeah, but later <laughs> nah, in life, it paid off. And you're nah, still man, I'm it. old now. I'm 51,000 years old. Look <laughs> at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> they got stem cells. Nah, right? I'm serious. I need them, champ. Let's go, champ. <laughs> but but that's like the drive. You, you know, my favorite uh, athlete is Kobe Bryant because I used to go to the, the Lakers games. Yeah. And at the time, I had four seats. And if he missed one shot, we would go up to the Lexus box and have dinner. And whatever the hell shot it was, everybody would be changed. He'd he'd be shooting that one shot for two hours because wow. he didn't have the the gene he didn't have the talent like a LeBron where you just wake up and you're just killing shit or, uh -huh. or Jordan. Like he had to really work and he yeah. had that drive. Yeah, and you had that drive too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? I I, I I disagree. I'm not saying you didn't have the talent. What I mean is you had the drive where Something. you would work nine jobs at yeah. At, at but, but again, I, 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 and I'll be the first to admit it was survival. Yeah. It wasn't about my drive. It was survival. I had, you know, we used to go swimming all day at the pool. We had a pool in our building where we lived. We had a swimming pool between the buildings. And, um, you know, we go swim all day. I mean, if he opened a school, if we if we was lucky and he opened that pool at 10 o'clock, 1030, we swim to 5, 6 o'clock, <laughs> right? So we come out the pool. He, he, they close the pool for like an hour, hour and a half sometimes. We'd go to the supermarket and pack some bags or whatever real quick so we could have money to get a hero. You feel me? Or after, you know what I'm saying? We, so we can get a little sandwich, you know what I'm saying? Some chips, a juice. For $5, you do crazy. You do good. So some days when the pool ain't open, you pack that whole day, you might get $40. I'm about, to, I'm about, I'm about to duck over here right now, but I, I still call that drive. I'm about yeah. to duck. I, I don't want no fucking right or left, bro. Yeah, that was just, uh, that was survival. I mean, that, we had to, but again. Drive to survive. Right. You could have went right. the other route. You're right. I could have. I'm nah. ducking. I'm ducking. Nah, nah, I don't want right. no problems. Right. I, I don't want drive. no problems with Shannon. Bro. I don't want no problems. Nah, you're right, Shannon. I apologize. <laughs> Right. I just, I just, I just had to. I, I learned that you could work for the money. I was fortunate that. I, 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 a big shout out and a, a special, you know, uh, God bless me. My friend, my friend's dad. His name was Gary Lindsay. My friend's name was Ryan Lindsay. And you know, the way the world was set up, he was my friend's dad. But I looked up to him. 
Like I want I want him to be my father. You know what I'm saying? Because he will always make us work. Do this, do that for a couple of dollars. Young, it was Gary, really Gary Lindsay that was a big push in my life. He was the first person that gave us boxing gloves in the neighborhood, so he was a big part of my um, success. I think in some ways, you know, and um, he was always the type of man to tell us, "Hey, yo, go do this, work, get a job, work." You know, what I'm saying, work for him. Push us, push us. Yeah. You know, he he opened up a laundry mat in the '80s. Man, we worked for years, demolition, working on the laundromat. You know, whatever Gary we could do, Mr. Gary, can I work for you? You know what I'm saying? When you got that type of uh, opportunity in a neighborhood, you're going to have better people. You get me? White, black, anywhere. Purple, opportunity. Yeah, it gave money. Me a chance. Yeah, yeah, people got to make money. You know what I'm saying? If you look at anybody and you say, all oh, these people are bad, all these people are poor, it's black, it's white. No, it's people that's poor. It's poor people. Poor people are messed up. White, black, yellow, it don't matter. Poor people be messed up. They be going through it. Today they be they be in situations where they going they might do something bad. They're not thinking about uh being eloquent or they they going through it. But you give people money, man. You see the difference in them? Yeah. <laughs> they put on their best clothes. They start talking different. People shaving. Say, yeah, oh, man. People start getting oh man. They they they, they change up. You could take, they did a show, the Beverly Hillbillies. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gave them the money. Yeah. That's anybody. You give anybody the money, it's going to change them. So when poor people don't got money, they're going to do crazy shit, champ. So for, as for me, I was always trying to make a little couple dollars legally, too, because I ain't want to go to jail. I ain't want to. They make it fashionable now to go to jail. It's like you see videos, everybody about jail, jail, jail. And, you know, they even show videos of people partying in jail. Like, yo, they got little cakes and shit they made. And, yo, champ, like, that's a fear for me. You know what I'm saying? Not to go to jail because I don't have the freedom to get up and go in the refrigerator when I want. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the freedom to, you know, see my family when I want. I'm a family man. You feel me? Yeah. I can't be in prison. I, that'll destroy my family. So, uh, and, and watching that growing up, it was a fear. And again, I say that to say this. If you ain't afraid sometimes as humans, you know, we just came down from the trees, all of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, not, no, not I too, agree with you. Not too long ago. So I say that to say, look, champ, if you don't have some sort of fear, mm. man, you, you might just do whatever, right? Right? Cross the line, right? Uh, law, God, religion, your parents, something. That teaches you control. Hey, don't do this. Don't put your head in the fire. Why? Because fire burns. Discipline. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? We talk about that all the time. Like, you think about, you know, kids nowadays. Not all kids, but, you know, you see them in, in some of the bigger cities, and they're going into stores, and they're they're stealing, you know, anything from a candy bar, which whatever, that's a little tiny thing. But you're talking about people going in and stealing almost $1,000 worth of stuff. Yeah. And, and, and not from the big stores, even sometimes yeah. from mom and pops. Yeah. And they're letting it like go like it's okay so there's no discipline there's no fear like you said so if no one's gonna punish me for doing something i'm gonna keep doing it and and i don't mean to i agree you agree i agree or not but can i add go ahead add something yeah to go ahead and i apologize yeah, no, add to it. poor people still true <laughs> poor people still broke people still black white any yeah. race everybody still when you broke and you're poor right so the whole thing is yeah, people going to continue to steal and be broke and, and everything, right? But guess what? Other countries, right? They make you pay. People still, people sure. still, they still stealing, but the price to pay is so hard. You're like, wait a minute, damn. He's going to make you say, think, you know, think second, have second thoughts. But check this out. What do you do when you broke? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the most important. Yeah. Do. Right now, somebody in Oakland, in Brownsville, in Miami, and so down the street, they broke. They need opportunity. They got to create some type of opportunity for these people. Or they got to create it for themselves. And that's the hard part. For an example, to refer to you, my good, good fucking friend in, in North Philly, he, he was a good guy, mm -hmm. right? And he, he didn't have an opportunity. You know, he wasn't an asshole or anything. He had a, a baby. 
he was selling a little bit of crack on the side, right? This is when fucking Obama just came. a little bit. Of crack. No, I, I mean, I mean, not a, not not like a fucking kilo, you know. Well, you know? God. But but what? Uh, but he wasn't like that. But he was having a kid, right. and he, he was trying to take care of his family. Right. I, I got maybe you. a bad example, yeah, but, like but they gave him twenty years. Champ. Damn. Twenty wow. years for like twenty grams. It wasn't Jeez. like it was like you know three ounces of crack. They they gave him that ten to a hundred, whatever Russell Simmons was telling us. Yeah. That crazy crack law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was a good kit, but he was just doing it for survival. Yeah. Well, but had he had gotten an opportunity, he wouldn't have done that. The, the hard, well, well, oh, sorry. The hard part I have is the kids. I always goes back to kids. I like coach youth sports, and I like to see you know. The kids, I always say, I think every kid should have to play a team sport. That's just my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Because it teaches you teamwork, Fact. it teaches you all that type of stuff. Fact. Working with different people. But, like, some places there's nothing, I'm sure, maybe like where you grew up, like you said, but there's nothing for these kids to do. Yeah. And the politicians don't want to invest in these communities. And yeah. it's sad because it's like, give people something to do or an opportunity, like you said. And it could change the whole dynamic of everything. Yeah, but we doomed. Just not doomed. I mean, you maybe. <laughs> yeah, we doomed, yo. We it's it's too many kids. <laughs> 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 it's too many kids worldwide. Yeah. I mean, you know they say? Don't let beer, Don't let uh, Bill Gates hear. hear hey, yo, yo, Tam, it's all about that. They say in the near future that uh, if not now, but it was like I think they said in like the next couple years, it's going to be the biggest homeless population ever in the humanity history of teenagers. Wow. Of teenagers, right? So just think, bro. Lord of the Flies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Think about the the of the world, homeless teenagers. Man, I'm telling you, man. Like we in a bad place, but um, I got a plan. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you about the plan. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I, I hope you have a plan. Well, well no, nah, the plan is just to uh, basically uh, do what I can do. I'm just the vessel and spread as much positivity and I want to thank you for this opportunity for oh, no, the show. Oh, no, thank you for coming No, real in, talk. Man. Because the opportunity is just to tell my story and if there's a kid out there that's listening and he ever felt like yeah. giving up, champ, don't do it. You feel me? Whatever I'm looking at, whatever camera, champ, don't do it. You feel me? I've been there. Um, it's a better way, champ. Go work out, join a team, do what you got to do. I, and, and, and the reason why, it's kind of crazy for me, but the reason it's kind of bugged out because I say, if I can make it, anybody could. No, I kid you not. If I could, you know, sometimes it's it's unreal to me that I look up, I look up, I, I look in my living room, and I have two heavyweight titles in there. You know what I mean? Real talk, real talk. Because um, of all of all people in the world, um, thinking back to the day I came home from school and I looked in the in the door. And the, the the hole was knocked out. The key where the lock was, they knocked out the key, and um, and I looked in it and I could see in the, inside the apartment. I could see like papers on the floor, and we was kicked out, right? But when I think back to that man from that day, who would have ever thought that I was looking inside that keyhole and that I was going to become heavyweight champion in the world? Twice. <laughs> right, Twice. you know what I'm saying, and that was that day. I wouldn't have thought of I wouldn't. I wasn't no boxer, you know what I'm saying. I wasn't no street tough, tough thug kid. I could just hold my own if I had to, and I had to because I had no brothers and sisters, so I had to do my my share of fighting. But I lived in a decent neighborhood until I went outside of that. But I liked fighting anyway. I like street. I like slap boxing. I like fighting. I I was always. Uh, Amazed with it in some ways, like the 52 block. I had a dude that lived in my neighborhood, K born, and I was like, Yo, show me that. You know what I'm saying? So I was always into the to the to the hand thing, and plus I had to defend myself too. You know what I'm saying? Light skin in the 80s in, in Brooklyn, 70s, 80s. You got to fight. Yo, you're gonna get beat up. You know what I mean? So I was fighting my share of fighting, and then um, but I wasn't no, no tough kid. You know what I'm saying? I got bullied. I got beat up. I, I tell people I had like 300 fights. I lost 150. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm right there. You know what I mean? But the losses, I took them, and I kept, you know, getting better. I like fighting anyway yeah, as a kid. So, um, but I never thought that day, looking in that hole, that I was gonna become heavyweight champion, have a family, have three kids. Yesterday, my daughter did a dance recital on Coral Springs, uh -huh. and. Um, you know, I tear it up because, you know, she's getting taller. She's 11 years old now. And I was looking at her saying, wow, looking and thinking and thinking. Just think back. Remember what I told you? He said, with the gun. 
mm. on the table. She wouldn't be here. You feel me? Yeah. I would have never made it to beautiful Florida. I would have never been able to, you know, met the people, meet you guys, meet travel the world. Man, I went. I've been so many places, champ. I've been to England. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Scotland. I've been to Thailand. I've been to Japan. I was gonna say, don't forget about Japan. I'm gonna bring that up in a little bit. I've been to Japan. <laughs> I've been, I, man. I've been so many places, man. Wales, man. I, I went to, I went to El Salvador. Nicaragua. How was El Salvador? Yeah, that's a vicious place. Yeah, hey, I went over there for a boxing match. Yeah, it was cool. I lo- everywhere I go, champ, I'm good. I have a good time everywhere I go Positive. because, yeah, you know, people like me. I like people, man. I, I'm, a, I'm a friendly. You call them a friendly. I'm, you know, in the fight. <laughs> I'm a friendly man. I'm cool with everybody. I don't want no beef with nobody, champ. You know what I mean? Until it's time for beef, and then I, I love it. <laughs> so I got a split personality. You know what I mean? Kind of have to. <laughs> yeah, and, especially. And I kind of keep harping on this because you know. Five, 10 million people will see this. And if you save one life, that's all that matters. Come on, man. champ. That's and they're going to listen. My goal. To that's my goal, champ. The goal is to honestly, like, where I'm at in life, uh, you know, I, one thing that I have that I'm blessed with is my memory. You know what I'm saying? I got a good memory, and I remember the days when I was down and out with nothing to do. And that was my point. I apologize. That was my point. Uh, when people don't have anything to do, they, they tend to do nothing or they tend to get in trouble. So, you know, I was that kid with nothing to do. And because I went to that gym, because of, Shout out, to, shout out to a guy named Zach. Because I went to that gym, it gave me an opportunity to have a life, travel the world, meet mad people, uh, just do do things that, you know, would have never thought I would have been able to do. I didn't even have an imagination enough to know because I told you I've been working since I was eight years old. So it's day to day for me. You know, um, I once had someone tell me, oh, you're not, you're not really all that as a fighter. You, you're a survivor. You, you're doing it to survive. And, you know, I guess it was to hurt my feelings. And I, obviously I remembered it, but he right. I had to survive. And boxing was a way to survive. It was a way that got me out of, and I went from sleeping in the gym to owning houses. You know what I'm saying? I went from, you know, sleeping on a train to getting my mother an apartment before she died. You feel me? The things, the little things That's that true. I couldn't imagine. The days when I was down, champ, when I was on the DJ, man, I want to tell you this one thing. For any kid out there that's listening, and I don't say that these things to disparage anybody, but I went to live with a relative. I met my my my. I, I went to live with my pops, my my supposed pops when I was like say seventeen years old. I got in some trouble. I went to stay with a man. Um, it was like Christmas night, right? So he had been telling me that he had wanted me to be in the house before nine o'clock or something like that. Like maybe I was seventeen, eighteen years old. He was like, "Yo, I want you to be in the house before." Nine o'clock for whatever reasons, whatever. I was like, all right, cool, you know what I mean? And um, so I was keeping up to that. So now Christmas came or was it Thanksgiving? It was, I want to say it was Christmas. And it was Christmas. And he, um, and so Christmas came that day and I was sitting around the house with me and my boy. I called my called homeboy. I was like, yo, what's up? What you, what you got planned? He was like, um, I ain't doing nothing. He was like, I was saying, like, we ain't got no food. So he was like, yo, my aunt, she live out in Queens. If we get over there, she gonna cook. We can eat over there. I was like, all right, cool, Christmas dinner. So we get a ride. We get out to Queens. Uh, we get out there. We eat. We had a full day. You know what I'm saying? We, was out there. we got out there early, right? So we got there maybe it was like 12 o'clock. So, uh, you know, it's becoming nighttime. I'm thinking I got to get back to the crib before Pops, you know, uh. he, he going to flip. <laughs> and he made it clear, yo. If you're not in here by nine, you got to get out. So I was like, all right, cool. So I know what it is. And it might have been 10. I apologize. So um, I'm, t- I'm looking at the clock. I'm looking at the clock. So we, we, we don't get a ride back. We was, we was expecting to get a ride back. We didn't get the ride back. So now we got to take the train. Oh, shit. So we on the train. I'm, I'm, I'm booking it. I never forget. We got to Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. I'm running down. I'm running down to the D train. I'm running to the D train to get on to go out, you know, out to Newkirk. Get off the train, run, run down to the crib. I get in the house. Yo, Tony, I get in the crib. It was like 9, 12. Right? Oh, boy. He called at 9, 17. He was like, hey, what's up? I was like, hey, what's up? He was like, yeah. <laughs> I was late, but I got there still. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I was late, but I got in about 9, 12, whatever. And he was like, um... Yeah, okay, cool. I said, all right, cool. He was like, yeah, all right, I'll talk to you later. Went to sleep. 
I hung up the phone went to sleep. How nuts is that? That you're like you're at that age and you're looking where you're going to eat on Christmas. Nah, or, to, or it you got, know, it got it got worse. Oh, it got worse. Oh, boy. At one o'clock, he came in. Oh shit! I was asleep. I was sleeping. Oh, he he, he rocked me. Uh-huh. I, was, I was like, "Yo, what's up?" I was like. What's up? He was like, oh, what's up? Yeah, we just got back. Oh, I was like, all right, cool. Oh, maybe I heard him coming in. I got up. But then I, what, what, this was the craziest shit ever. He was talking. He told me about the night or whatever. He went in his room, and I was there. I went, got back in the bed, and went to sleep. I was dozed off. He came back in the room. He he rocked me like this. I woke up. He was like, what's up? I said, I, I said what's up? Everything okay? He said, get your stuff. I said, what? He said, get your stuff. You got to go. I said, why? What happened? He said, you got to go. I told you to be here by 9 o'clock. Oh. I said, but I told you I got here like 9, 12, and you didn't call. But he was like, I told you 9 o'clock. Wow. Pack your shit. Mm-hmm. I packed my shit. I got everything up. I walked through the door. I was like, I went outside. It was Christmas. I'll never forget. It was snow. They had pushed the snow on the streets to the to the sidewalks, but it was so like four in the morning now, right? So all the snow was piled up. I'm trying to get through the snow. They ain't make the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. It's all I'm walking through the trying to get through the snow with the bags. I got the bags. I go. I said I ain't got nowhere to go. It's dark. I go to the D train. I wait till the train come. I get on the train. Sit on the train. The train go to Coney Island. <sighs> I fall asleep. I wake up, I'm paranoid. I'm like, oh shit, you know, kind of, I seen the movie The Warriors. You know what I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know what I mean? You know? What's gonna happen now, right? I wake up, I'm I'm shook, I fall back asleep. I wake up and we in the Bronx. That was Christmas Day. You know what I'm saying? Wow, man. So I say that to say that I went from those experiences made me heavyweight champion of the world twice. Because when he talking about survival, I was saying that point. Survival, yeah, I had to survive. I had to find a way to survive and not in prison. Survive, the hardest thing has been is staying out of jail, doing no crime, being legal. That's harder than anything else in the world. To do it by the book, don't go to jail, stay free, man, you crazy? I'm 51,000 years old. All these thousands of years, I call a day a thousand years. A day is a hundred years, champ. I've been out here doing the best I can to be the best I can legally. That shit is no joke. It's real, especially when you got no high school diploma, no college. college. You just an athlete, ex-athlete, athlete. You got to get it out the mud. You got to scratch. You got to make it happen. You got to make plays when there ain't no plays. You feel me? And that's where I've always been, a playmaker. You ask anybody who know me, I man, listen, I'm up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm making calls. I'm trying to put together deals. I got 20 pots on the oven. <laughs> I got 20 <laughs> pots cooking right now. I'm a chef. I got 20 pots cooking. Why? Because one might go out. This one might not have enough money to make it. This one, the, my partner going to try to do the steal and shit. This one, I got I got to work. I got to hustle. You feel what I'm saying? That's a survivor. If that, if you, if knocking a survivor is that, then knock me. You know, that, that's fucking crazy. Drive, motivation, survival, yeah. all of them check. combined. That's what it's about. Yeah. Now, again, I, I don't mean to harp on this, but if if somebody, what made if somebody's in that suicidal state, yeah. right? You picked up the phone to call that line. Yeah, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. You could have just said fuck it. Yeah. Why do you think you picked up that phone? Um. I ain't have nothing, man. I was, I was. I but why didn't? I mean, like, why do you think you just didn't just go jump off a balcony? You, you know, like, because people sometimes they get to the edge, or somebody yeah. pulls them back. Yeah. There's somebody there. Yeah. But you didn't have anybody. You actually had somebody hand you a gun. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But but initially, like, what made you pick up the phone because you wanted help? So like, yeah. how could you get the people? Like, look, if you if you got if you're in that situation, just pick up the phone. Man, it was like. When black people was in slavery, champ, they was praying. They was praying day and night to get out of this situation for years. They was praying, God help me, God help me, God help me. Whatever God they was given, whatever book they was given, they took this this thought and this spirit and this, they manifested freedom. They ain't take their freedom. Black people ain't never take their freedom here in America. Haiti, yeah. 
but it was given them it was given a freedom compassionate white people say yo this is bad yo yeah this shit is fucked up yo. shit's wrong yeah this shit ain't right champ you feel me so that spirit those praying those prayers man they, I, I sometimes think man they must have came down to me you know what i'm saying and there must be some type of spirit my great grandmother or gra- I, I don't know i ain't smart enough to know you know what i'm saying champ but i know it's something that's been there as you know and and also i ain't no dummy you know what I'm saying? I know I ain't slow. Shout out to my man JFK. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my man JFK. Yeah. I, you know, I know I ain't slow. Yo, champ, some type of spirit has always walked with me. Some type of guardian angel, big brother, little brother, say, man, Shannon, this ain't a good idea. Even when I've been in the bad times. And you know what, man? I ain't going to lie to you, champ. My mom used to be like, yo, we came from a religious background. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my mom was praying. She was a Baptist, born born a Baptist. My grandmother was a Baptist. Her grandmother was a Baptist. So we got a religious family. You get what I'm saying? Pass mm-hmm. it down. Now listen, I'm not the most religious person in the world. You know what I'm saying? I study and I learn and confused, if anything. Hell you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right? But I just know I'm happy to be here. But listen to this, champ. Champ, just think of all the chances of us to be here and to be alive. Man, somebody's with you. Some, something. Something helped us to be here together, right? And that's why we just got to figure it out, man. Figure out how we can live good and live right and live righteous. That's what I'm trying to do, man. I've done so many stupid things in my life, man, that I look back and, you know, I regret. I live with regret. I'm really hard on myself. I'm, I live with regret. I live with saying, man, I wish I wouldn't have did this. I wish I wouldn't have did that. And nothing bad. I ain't not, I'm not no criminal. I don't do nothing illegal. I don't do nothing illegal, champ. But some things I say, man, that wasn't a good character choice. And a lot of times, it's me dealing with people that I shouldn't have dealt with. And I feel bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd be better off if I didn't deal with people, champ. And that's my future, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> dealing with not dealing with people. But, um, uh, yeah, it's a journey, man. I'm, I'm, I just want to thank you again for having me. Oh, because, no, thank you. You know what? Well, this is good for me, too, because I get to express myself and vent in some good, positive ways and let people know, kids out there who watch it, man, champ, listen, man, if I can make it, I was saying that earlier, and I apologize, I got off train of thought. No, you I, 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 say it all, all you can because I'm I'm telling you, like, I see it. You know, now, now that I've been doing this podcast thing, yeah. I see it. And when somebody, somebody like you speaks, you don't realize how many lives you save. Well, I want to tell them right now, if I can make it, anybody can. I'm kidding you not. And I'm kid- let me tell you how and why. Because I wasn't no tough kid. I wasn't no street kid. I wasn't no jail kid. I wasn't no, you know, Mike was robbing young and fighting. I was none of that. I had my comic books. I had my Star Wars. I I'm my- still mad you don't got the goddamn <laughs> comic books. I'm like, hey, hey. Uh, That's yeah, another story. You want to talk about that? Oh, you man. That? I can, I can, I'm really good at marketing. Yeah. Yeah, if you so, would have had them fucking comic books. Oh, man, we would have been rich right Marty now. Business, we would have been paid right <laughs> now. About, what cigar are we getting for tonight? Yeah. We'd have been paying on the Most expensive, book. order the yacht. Oh, man, tell me about it, champ. But um, from from if I can make it, champ, and coming from the situation I came from, uh, only child, man, anybody can make it. You might not become heavyweight champion, but you can make it, champ. You feel me? Because one thing I didn't do is I didn't give up. It, it was nothing given to me, just given to me. Ain't shit been given to me. I got to go out there and knock on doors, kick cans, I had to, as a kid, I, I had to go get a manager. Nobody, I wasn't, nah, I had to go get a man. I had to go check me out. I was out there calling people up. Scott, and I'm the same way today. People will tell you, I'm, I'm hustling. I'm getting on the phone. I'm making calls. I'm, I'm connecting dots. Why? I have to. I don't have no body behind me. I've always been self-reliant. I've always had to go out myself and meet investors or meet partners and try to do it. And it's always been you. hard. Hard yeah. when you're trying to build something, especially a brand. I, I was uh talking with uh my boy Sammy over at uh Youth Box and Youth Sport. I was in Thailand recently. Um, and shout out to Sammy and shout out to Neff. You know, black people, we gotta give us a shout out. <laughs> and by the way, uh, big respect that you you still Thank do you, you do all this stuff, yeah. You know, I have to, no, I, I, no I mean, I, really, yeah, really you, respect brother. you a lot. Thank you, champ. But with that being said, my not brother, just for the cannon. Oh, that's <laughs> my boy, my boy Sammy, man. I was over there in um, Thailand, and he said, he said, champ, you know what's the hardest thing I, to do in one in, in the world? One of the hardest things to do. I said, what? He said, build a brand. 
I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, trust me, I know. I said, I know, because you know what? You got to have bread. You got to have something behind. You got to have money. Going back to poor people. Yep. Poor people, white, black, poor people got to have money. If they don't got something to earn, they're going to be act up. They're going to act up and act out. You know what I'm saying? And do they have a choice? <laughs> I don't think they have a choice. You know? when, you, when your stomach touching, when your ribs touching, fuck you it. Man, you... <laughs> fuck it, right? You get, we, we call it the case of the buckets, right? Fuck you it. Really? When your ribs touching, <laughs> you're like, man, man, I'll tell you, man, I was broke one time, man. I was so broke. I know you would do, I know you know what this means. The, the, the water sandwiches start to uh, run out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yo, champ, I used to get, I used to get like five dollars from somewhere, champ. I find up five, I come up on five dollars and, um, I'm gonna get like a dollar worth of bologna. I get like a dollar worth of cheese, a little jar of Hellman's mayo, <laughs> and and uh, a loaf of bread. You feel me? And a loaf of bread. So that right there was that would last a, a small loaf of bread for seventy nine cents. That was my meal. I'm living off that. And sometimes I'll go get some Chinese food. You know what I'm saying? Four wings and rice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is in the 80s. I'm talking about scutching. I'm talking about surviving against all odds. Nobody, mom's in jail, mom's in a crazy house, man, pops in jail. I'm in the streets. I'm just wandering. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to hustle for people. I'm trying to go booze. I'm trying to find my way. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to help these kids, man, because I know what it feels like. So that's what the Let's Go Champ is about, man, helping the kids, you know, hoping that they, um, we can save... If not all of them, a couple of them, man, let them know. And if you're watching out there, kids, man, don't give up, brother or sister. Say, let's go champ. <laughs> Tell yourself, I'm the champ, and I'm going to make it. I'm not giving up. You feel me? But a, lo a lot of the stuff you're saying, and I appreciate it to hearing it, it's it's all hard. And, again, you had a different situation on why you became you and what your work ethic and drive. It's hard nowadays, like, you know, try to teach the kids, you know, you got to work hard for things. Some people want, like, the million dollars tomorrow. Facts. But it takes time to get there, and it takes, you know, you working the extra hours and getting up at 5 a.m. compared to some guy who got up at 10 a.m. Right. It, that's the part that's just so nice to hear, and hopefully the kids or whoever's listening to this is listening. You know, you got to work hard for stuff, too. And, you know, how do you teach or how, what do you say to the kids, like, um, you know, it's okay to lose, it's okay to get knocked on your ass, right? Because you should learn from your mistakes, right? Would that be a perfect thing to say? Like, you, you're going to get hit sometimes, you're going to fall, yeah. and it's how you get back up, I yeah. guess. You know, the whole thing to that, to me, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, that's sometimes, if you, if, you, if you get knocked down and you stay down, man, that must be nice that you get to lay down there, huh? You get, to get that nice opportunity to lay down. That must be nice. When you get knocked down, you can't lay down because you fall on spikes. And that's when you got to get back up. So that's what it's like for me. If I lay, if I fall, I fall on spikes. I get back up because, you know, I, I fall all the time. Like deals don't go through. Uh, situations take longer than ever. And, uh, and I feel I fall. I'll be like, damn, this messed up this. and that. But guess what? I get back up. I got no choice. You know why? I got a family. Got a little girl. I got a baby girl. I got two boys. I got a wife. You know why? Because if I didn't have them and I fell, I don't like it on the spikes. Mm -hmm. When I was homeless, I was depressed. I was missing meals. I was I was looked upon. I got a I got pride. You know, I feel bad. Like I see, I think also too, I know it's for a fact. If you come from nothing, then you don't nothing is nothing. You feel what I'm saying? I came from something. I came from Atlantic Towers. I came from my mother. Forget Atlantic Towers. I came from my mother who instilled in me good stick, good shit. You know what I'm saying? Go to school, be something. You know what I'm saying? Make something of your life. And I, I, I didn't make it in. And you know, she wanted me to be a preacher, or she wanted me to be like a, <laughs> a you know, a lawyer or a doctor. I didn't make yeah. it in there. I made it in boxing. But who would have ever thought? that I'll become heavyweight champion. I wouldn't have thought that. She wouldn't have thought that. I wasn't no tough boy like that, but I did it. I was good with my hands. I was good with marketing to myself. I had the right fights at the right time. And um, you know what? When you put a man or a woman's back against the wall, man, you see them, they, they might start scratching like a cat. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you put their back against the wall. They didn't get the claw. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, you know, for me, them spikes, when you fall, get your ass back up. You ain't got no choice. What you gonna do? Lay down? Who cares? 
and sometimes that's the best thing. I mean, we've had so many people in here, and you hear the stories of these like crazy successful people, million, multi millionaires. They've lost so many times and messed up so many times, but they learned like, okay, okay, yeah, I fucked up there. That shouldn't have done that. And it made their business 10 times better than it would have been if they didn't fuck up. Because they didn't like them damn spikes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Facts. You learn. You learn. Experience, right? Wisdom. You learn from your experiences. And um, I have, you know, I have so many times I've said, wow, no, that's that's a, uh, that's a red flag. Or, you know what I mean? I've learned, you know, it's business is tough. And that's the hardest. The hardest, I think, you know, like, it's, it's so many different things in life. But being an entrepreneur. And you know, in this branding age, and branding yourself, like the brother said over in Thailand, brother Sammy said, "That brand's a motherfucker." It's hard to make a brand. <clears throat> I so, didn't realize it's it. It's not easy, Shit but takes I'm, forever. But it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. We got it. We got to keep working. One, <laughs> you know what I'm one quick thing too. <laughs> yes, on the, going on the kid part. Um, so, you know, you talk about bullying earlier. You talk about being bullied, and you hear a lot of that word thrown around: bullying, bullying, bullying. And we had. Um, couple of UFC guys in here and I talked about it and I really think it's important and maybe it's something along your path maybe I don't know but I feel like schools should instill and it sounds weird like put fighting in schools right <laughs> but 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 you know like there's there's kids that grow up with no dads there's kids that grow up with nobody no parents right. and they're striving for they want like discipline they actually crave it sometimes even though it doesn't seem like they do they want it and like the after school programs, they just keep pulling money out of that and putting it into bullshit. Like if they had more after school activities, whether it be boxing class, whether it be, you know, MMA class, do you think that's something that maybe in the future, I'm not saying you yourself, but that they should have more stuff for kids to do? We were learning right now, Chan. That's what we're working on with our rap report. Good. And uh, yeah. Joe and Ariel and the team, Rem, shout out to Rem the villain. Uh, we're working on it right now. We actually have a... This episode is brought to you by Fiji. More than just water. This is not just rock. It's ancient volcanic rock that filters tropical rain, giving it double the electrolytes and its signature soft, smooth taste. It's not just water. It's Fiji water. A curriculum built up, being built, which is the Brownsville Boxing Academy, whereas... It's not just about being a fighter. You may want to become a referee, a, a manager, a promoter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, learn now. Why wait until you get, yeah. you know, 24, 25, 26 years old, 20 years old? Start now. Learn learn how to fill out an application. This is going to, uh, if you want to be, become a cut man or a cut woman, right, for, for instance, that's still something in the medical field. You mm -hmm. might wind up getting some kid, and this kid said, I'm going to be a cut man one day or whatever, or, or now... This person goes to the medical field. I'm like, oh, I started out because of boxing, but I'm a doctor now. Or I'm a, you know what I'm saying? So same thing with a manager. The the and I and this is why you know this this movie and this docu series was created is because where we from in Brownsville is not even two miles in size. But again, you have three former heavyweight champions. You have uh, the likes of Danny Jacobs, Curtis Stevens, um, a new kid named Shushu. Um, just, you know, quite a few fighters come from the neighborhood, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, and, you know, just a, a, a tough, really tough neighborhood that has put over a billion dollars, if not $2 billion, into the sport of boxing. Just think about it. Wow. Think about yeah. it. Just this small neighborhood, which is in, which is not two miles in size, <laughs> has put over a billion dollars for sure between the one between one and $2 billion into the, the, the economy of boxing, right? So... Obviously, Brownsville has been a big. Uh, it, it's done some. It, it's it's contributed to boxing, right? There's something there. There's something there, right? Yeah. Obviously. So with that being said, why does it just have to be pop fighters? Nah, nah. We can dominate in everything in boxing. It should be when you're looking for a, a boxer, you go to Browns. And when you're looking for a jockey, you go to India. When you're looking for a baseball player, you go to Dominican Republic or Cuba or somewhere, right? When you're looking for a boxer, you should go to Brownsville, Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Right over there, you got 
The most projects in anywhere in the world is concentrated is in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Then we are in the world. If you look it up right in now, the world? in the world, we have wow. the most projects in anywhere in the world. Damn. Right, right, project, housing project, right, right there, condensed right there in one small neighborhood, Brownsville, Brooklyn. I was born and raised there. I know it well. I like the back of my hand. It's, 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 it's a, it's a place. If you watch the podcast that I did with Mike Tyson, yeah, hot boxing, yeah, hot yeah. boxing. When we talk about it, uh, we both get emotional because when you're from Brownsville, you you wear with a, a badge of honor, and as well as. It's a hell place, but you love it. I love it. It's like, you know, when I go back, I'm like, wow. You know, I traveled the world, like I said, but when I go back to Brownsville, I'm like, wow. Because Brownsville, you know, you know, they say it, Brownsville would be the only place it'd be raining at all the time. <laughs> I, I should rain. <laughs> yeah, man, that's like one of those things my dad always tells me is like, no matter where you get in life, you get to the hopefully the pinnacle where you want to be. He's like, never forget where you came from because. Yeah. That's what made you, you know, yeah. it just makes you. Yeah. And, it's different though. Like when you come in the Ville, it's like you if you live that, you know you know what's out there, you know what it was like. And, and you know, back in the days and even now, it's still and, and, and I'm not trying to say when violence as a pride, but you survived it. The 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 uh the economy was horrible, it was dirty, it was poor, and we survived it. And and we stick together. You know what I'm saying? We, I might be somewhere. I might be in Africa. But if I see a dude getting jumped, he from Brownsville by some Africans, I'm jumping in to help him. <laughs> I got to because he from Brownsville. Um, and that's just how we are. We stick together. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy place. But what we're doing is the curriculum is we want to bring the Brownsville Box Academy for one major reason. Not just boxing, the, the entire combat business. It's a business. Yeah. We have put a billion dollars, if not more, into the business. Why should you not, why should we not have an academy? You go to school, learn how to be a referee, a doctor, a ringside physician, uh, a judge. Uh, these are jobs, placements in such a big business. UFC, one championship, all around the world. You might say, you know what, let me get him, let me get her, be a judge. People travel the world being judges. True. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. travel, ring announcing. You know what I'm saying? Learn. Go down there. Learn how to be, fill out a, become a manager. Learn what it takes. Now, that's the school. That's the school for us. Well, look at Bruce Buffer. Right. We have Bruce Buffer. Oh, that's He's my boy. That's the champ. First, hey, boy, he can market. That's Let me my tell boy. You. He's, He's the market. best ever. He's yeah. the best ever. <laughs> yeah. you know, the first thing was the cologne. Uh, yeah. uh, cool. Let's go, champ. Cool guy. But, He's the best ever. But, like you said, you know, look at him. Yeah. And he took love one it. thing to another thing and boom. Uh, that's I, see guys like him. I love him. <laughs> see, I'm smiling because that's that, that's me. Like I love guys like that because that's me. He I've sent, been uh, look he at sent, him, he sent me this after he was on the show. Yeah. Let's go, champ. <laughs> yeah, look at this. See, best ever. Look at my boy. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, look what he it's did. Tall, got, that's right. Gotta yeah, love it. I make it laugh. When man, oh uh, man, that's the best ever, man. Yeah. You can't. Uh, I gotta call him. Tell him yeah. uh, I need one of those, champ. Yeah. What? Look. Wait a minute. Uh, Come on, not the bobblehead. <laughs> not the Bruce Buffer bobblehead. Let's go, champ. Let's yeah, go, man. champ. That's, that's dope. Look at him. He He's came on, man, and you know he just had so many ideas and so He's many things best. coming out with it. I mean, is that not him or what? I'm telling you, know what that's man? what I love about him. You know, I'm the same way, man. I'm always hustling, and I call it hustling for lack of better words, which is just trying to make plays, trying to, you know. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, man. Yeah. Entrepreneur, man. Ne negotiating. <laughs> negotiating. <laughs> Poor by tattoo. <laughs> and that's the story behind Let's Go Champ. Yes, it, man. I, I, you know, I was like, you know what? I looked up one day, and it was like, what are the highest paid businesses? You know what I'm saying? And I don't remember what, it was on a YouTube channel, uh, video, and they had like oil, energy, you know what I'm saying, resources and all that. And it was like in the top three, it said trademark and license. And I was like, mm. damn, you know, brands. And I was like, damn, that's where it's at. Brands, like if you got a slogan, you got something that people know you as. And also, too, to be honest with you, George Foreman, man. George Foreman is. How about that grill? Yeah. yeah. I mean, just that, just, just, just period. You know, people talk about the grill. But before that, you know, he was doing little things with the cheeseburgers. Yeah. He was, you know, he was doing his thing to try to, you know, market and, and push himself, you know. And even now, he's got, the, he's got steaks. I see some type of insurance. Um, you know, he had the mining key forever. So, you know, he's he, he's a you know personality that people look at him and say, you know, I know George, Big George. He's friendly, you know, he's got the 
He's, man, he's an amazing person because not only he again one of the greatest heavyweights I think in in, in history, top five. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but in, if not number one when it came to career, because look what he did with the grill. Look what he did with his yeah. his image. He turned his image around. His image. We don't. People don't even think talk about his. His youth, because we know him now as George Foreman. You feel me? I ain't try to really do that. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just me. I'm, I don't see myself as anything ex- except as your your homeboy, your uncle, your uncle champ. You know what I'm saying? To the young boys, you know, young young boys and girls. Whereas I'm just motivating them and try to push them, tell them you'll be the best you'll be. And again, I always say, if I could do it, anybody could, champ. I had nothing. And speaking of, you know, Michael Buffer didn't have. Let's get ready to rumble. Trademarked and Bruce made sure it got trademarked. And from that, yeah. boy, hello, yeah, hello, go, bank champ. account. Let's go, champ. Uh, go to uh, scroll down, Rob. I'm getting some of these shirts tonight. I, I didn't realize <laughs> it. Till, no, they're cool as shit. Uh, thank go, you, champ. Go to our shop now. That's my wife right there. Oh, congratulations! Uh, thank congratulations you. on your family. Thank you, champ. You got the hats, the mugs, <clears throat> and. The I I like the co- the the coffee go co- the coffee cup to me is like a smile like a big fuck you. Okay? Go, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's right. You know what I mean? And, 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 and it's funny you say that because truth truth be told, like um, you know, in the early '90s, mid '90s, I had some 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 nice sponsorships, and then obviously you know that those kind of faded away or whatever. And for many years, I would like go after you know sponsorships or people to you know put up the brand and they were like, ah, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I ain't I ain't really uh I ain't really Disney friendly. You know, I you know, I'm I'm cool, but I ain't the Disney, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I know. I ain't the Disney character. So with that being said, I was like, yo, I'm gonna just make my own brand. You now, feel me? Now so I know because I'm gonna get a Oh, I, I got shirts get a, for y'all in the car by the way. Damn, oh, I'm stupid. That's I, right. left, I, 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 got, I I'm gonna I order got like fifteen anyway. shirts for y'all. Oh shit. <laughs> now for people like me who are Lean, but want to look a little bit bigger. Are they are they gotcha. slim fit, or do I get the extra small? Do I get my oh. little brother? Now he's he's got the fucking height to prick back here. Right? How about that? <laughs> you know what? I got I got all sizes, champ. Don't worry. I'm right. whole bunch of shirts for you. Now it said, where's the uh, the youth gloves? Do you, you don't have them yet? Nah, the youth gloves they're going up, man. In a couple of days, actually, man. Shout out to uh, Sammy over at Fairtex and Mr. Wong. Everybody over at Fairtex, beautiful place, beautiful gym. Um, I did a, I did a deal with them with youth youth boxing. They're gonna do uh, they're gonna be putting out the Let's Go Champ shirts and hats, so you'll be able to order it with it. This is this site. This is my site now, but within the next couple of days, it's gonna be updated to. Something even crazy. A lot more, yeah. And this is just Shannon A lot more Briggs. products. Excuse me. A lot more products. ShannonBriggs.com. ShannonBriggs.com. Yes. It's all there. Yep. Go over to uh, the Two Over, uh, Son. Now, this is your son. Let's, let's, let's get Ooh, Kaden going, right? <laughs> right? Let's get him going. Let's right? go, champ. Let's get him going. Yeah, yeah. We go go follow him. Get him going. And go to the tab right before that. And I'll play Ooh. it. Yeah, oh, here turn is. the sound on this, Rob. <laughs> Hold on, let me go down the bottom. Oh, no thank Let's you. Let's go, Jeff. How old is he? He's 17. He just turned 17 last week. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Let's go, champ. He's blocking good. Yeah. Oh. He hurt me. Pops is I was gonna say Pops is gonna hit me. He got it. He, he hurt, hurt me. I ain't gonna look, look, you're getting like you're getting wiped off. <laughs> he's like, let's go. I had to take a go. break. He ain't done. Look, he's he's strong, yeah. Nah, that's good he puts his hands up right away. He's ripped me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh he was getting oh, he got a Yes, 
He's like, Let's dude, Frank, he, he's watching you. Let's go, champ. Awesome. Yeah, that was dope. Uh, shout out to your boy, man. I'll support him. He's you're the best, man. 17? 17? He just turned 17 last week. He's giving body shots. Yeah, he ain't no joke. I mean, it's crazy because I never wanted my kids to box, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, nah, no box. I just to see that. He's giving the kidneys. Yeah, yeah. I never wanted my kids to box, you know? I was like, nah, they go, um, I don't want them to go down that that route. But um they love it, man. They love it. So um So everybody follow him. Yeah, right, yeah. get him my going. Son, Kaden, man. Yeah, thank yeah. you, champ. Yeah, shout out to my boy Kaden. And my son Chad, man. They, I call him influencer boxers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw. Well, yeah. well both of them in the description. Follow them. Yeah, check yeah. them out. Thank you know. You, How old's your other son? He's uh he's twenty five. He's okay. a model. His uh his his Instagram is Chan Briggs. Check him out, Chan Briggs. He's a pretty boy. He got his mother looks. He, <laughs> he lucky. He lucked up. <laughs> pull pull him up when you can. Yep. And yeah. what, how you spell it? Chan. He's on Instagram. Chan C H A N. Dot Briggs B R I G G S. That's his, that's his his handle. So your son came to you to box. He he wanted to box. Yeah, and I was like, nah, get out of here with that. And he was like, nah, Dad, come on, I want to give it a shot. And then um, he went for it. I was like, you know, he was already like. I took him to the gym. I was like, I get him out of it, and um, I took him to the gym. And I let him spar three three kids, and he got busy. And his first time, I'm like, Who taught you that? <laughs> You're like, it wasn't me. I was yeah. trying to keep away from this. Yeah, this is my other boy right here. This is him. I got the right one. Yeah, that's my hit son. follow. Uh, on there and scroll uh, scroll you, down. Yeah, sure, man. That's your boys, man. You guys the best. You guys the best. Yeah, man. Always take time. Yeah, that's my boy, man. Oh, uh, good for him, man. Yeah, he chilling. He model and all that. And um, with the slick. Yeah, look, look at him with the swag. <laughs> All right, boy, shout out, man. Yeah, he been in a couple movies. You know, he did a couple movies. Did he? What size shoes he wear? I don't even know. <laughs> Fucking 19? <laughs> Let's go, champ. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome, man. Sharp looking kid. Uh, thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good kid, man. I've been fortunate, man. You know. Good for you. You know, my kids. Uh, he's ripped his shit, too. I got him, y'all. Jeez. Yeah. He's ripped. Yeah, he's a good kid, man. Shout out to him, my wife, and my daughter. I'm sure he picks up some uh, good ladies. Yeah, I was, <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's not having a tough time out there. You know what I mean? uh, life's not tough for him. Mom, close your ears. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Yeah, his, uh, his mom's, he got his mom's looks. He's lucky. <laughs> I look like a gorilla. And then there's Dad. You he, he right. got fucking supermodel over here. No offense, That's but right. you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But I'm, he ain't doing that, yeah. though. I'm the Yeti. He ain't doing that right they there. Call, they call me the Brownsville Yeti. What, how much were you pulling? He's, Jesus. Man, I don't even know. I got him working, too. Look at him. I had him working. Oh, shit. He's, he's pulling with the rope. Oh, he's going the real way. Come on. We got to eat. Okay. We got to eat. That shit's hard. Right. working. Get in there. Pull in that wheel. Pull in that wheel. You got it. Pull in that wheel. You got it. Come on. We got to eat tonight. We got to eat tonight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, that, that's what's cutting his ass up. Yeah, that's when he was young, and now he's strong. You should see him. He's yeah. a trainer. He do his thing. Good for you, like you said. You know, one day you were in that peephole, and now, now you yeah, got champ. children and, thought, and everything. Who would ever thought, man? You never give up, champ. That's the motto, man. Never give up. Let's go, champ. When you're feeling now, you don't want to quit. Don't do it, champ. You never know what tomorrow's gonna bring. You feel me? And uh, don't let your um, don't let your inner thoughts. You know, uh, take over. You, sometimes we start talking to ourselves. We start thinking down. We start talking down like, yo, I'm not worthy. I did this. So, well, what, man, listen, fight back. Let's go, champ. You know what? Start a new day in a new way. Smile. Be the best you can be. Now look what you got. You got a model and kid who's ripped as hell. Oh, man. Not knocking everything down wherever oh, he's at. You know that. He's, he's, knocking, he, he's having a good time. I, I got to see my wife. I don't even know. <laughs> my wife Instagram, she, she started a thing of 50, 50 years of dancing, something like that. You know, she's, yeah. so she killing it too, man. And your other son, he's in shape. And now you got a daughter, boy. I just uh, had my, I had my first uh, child. I knew it was, I was like, you don't even have to check the gender. Right. What I did when I was a kid in Philly, I already knew it was going to be a girl. All the right. payback, right. you know, right, sure. and that changed me, boy. Oh man, for sure. Who you telling, man? I'm, I'm praying to God. Uh, me too. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy. I go, at the door I go. Here. This generation, she's three right now. Man. Oh boy, oh, I, I already got my bails bondsman oh, on. Uh, I, I got my word ready. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping for the best, man. You know, I think that, uh, you know, my 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 wife is. Uh, She's on. She's on top of her incense. We got to dance, and she's you know focused on school. Oh, great. But you got to be careful because it's, be it's careful, inter man. the internet, man. And these kids are fast. Just think about when we was kids, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was you know 
for our time, we was trying to be fast. We was trying to learn. I listened to what kids was doing, the older kids, and you know what I'm saying? So they advanced. They smarter than we was. I had a, the most thing I was, remember the Nextel, the yeah. two-way Nextel? I don't yeah. know if you remember that, where you go walkie-talkie, yeah. and that was the cool thing? Yeah. It wasn't. Than, we were they on iPhones and iPads. Yeah, all that. Sh- they crazy can move stuff. around and they can, you know, surf the internet. So we gotta be careful. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can, we can't think they're not uh, curious because we was. Yeah. You know, so I used to go at my mom when my mother and father left. You know, my, I was home alone. I go to my mother's room and start looking through everything. I want to see everything. I'm just like, curious. Like, like, exploring. Yeah. Exploring. I'm looking through everything. I'm just looking. And I'm I'm finding drugs. I'm like, what's this? And I asked my mommy, mommy, what's this? Oh, leave that alone. This is the old Shannon. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a different life, life, different life than what my kids are living. And that's why I did it. That's why I did it. That's why I didn't give up so that I could have a family one day and that they could, uh, you know, live a better life than I did. And plus, you know, having people, having a family, having a wife is gives men a lot of time uh, drive. You know, when you know, you, you go home, why? You, if you ain't got no wife at home, what you go home, you might not go home, right? Mm-hmm. You know, a guy told me that. Well, Scott, it's true. Scott Hirsch. Shout out to Scott Hirsch. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, shout out to Scott Hirsch. He told me that one time. He said, if you ain't have a wife, what's the sense of going home? And that social media is just a brainwash. Yeah, they, I mean, we I use it for business, so do you. Yeah. But you get on, you get you get too locked in on there, man. It's brutal, it's brutal, man. man. Yeah, it's, it's brutal, man. Uh, as soon as you wake up in the morning, it's the first thing you grab. First thing you grab. Yeah, that's why we got to have something positive. Boundaries. Kids, yeah. Boundaries and yeah. something else to do. I'm working on it right now, the Let's Go Champ app, man. The app. You know That'll be man? funny. All positivity. Good. You know, you wake up, you want to go positive, man. You No negativity. Oh, let's eat champ. Oh, yeah. One. Before we get into some of your boxing stuff, everybody's heard all the boxing, but I, I do want to ask you some questions. Pull up uh, Chance Instagram, because the first one you have pinned where I got the cartoon from, Okay. it, it, it just, you can start your day with that and just laugh. <laughs> Let's go, Jay. That's so, uh, yeah, scroll down. And it's the first one pinned. Right it's a, yeah, this is funny shit. It cracks me up. You got to do it. Shorty, give me that, your champ. Trust me, man. You can't use balls. You hear me? Listen to me, man. Hanging out with the wrong people, wrong decisions will ruin your life, especially when you start taking drugs, man. Do the right thing. Be the champ. You the champ. Champ. And your shorty. Give me that, your champ. Trust me, man. You can't use drugs. You hear That's me? Funny. Listen to me, man. Hanging out with the wrong people, wrong decisions will ruin your life, especially when you start taking drugs, man. Do the right thing. Be the champ. You the champ. Champ. See, funny but great message. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Let's go, champ. Yeah, right? That's man. great, though. Yeah. You got to do a little that. cartoon, man. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, they need that because... um. We had Saturday morning cartoons. Remember that? Yeah. Hell yeah! That yeah. was like you woke up early. That's I was watching Speedy Gonzales. <laughs> yeah. You got your cereal. Yep. Your got my, I got my Lucky Charms with my That's Cinnamon right. Toast Crunch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You got up early. Got your cartoons. Like, they don't do that no more. You know they on the they on the um phone the phone twenty four hours a day. You know what I mean? So you know I'm working on an app right now. Let's go champ app where. We could just have it fun, fun for the kids. You Put know? more of them cartoons yeah, in. Champ yeah, Champ TV. Like those. Champ TV. That's awesome. Instead of Coco Melon, that had some subliminal message in, I heard. I don't know. I'm afraid my daughter, that's all she watches. I'm afraid. Yeah, it's all about positivity, man. You know? Yeah, this is your uh, Instagram check out. Check out. <laughs> check out the cannon, man. Let's go, Champ. Let's go, Champ. Yeah, man. So then you got into the gym. You, you, you fell in love with the smell. Yeah. Was Teddy Alice the first one who, who took? Who trained you? Is that nah. who the first one was? No, no, no. My first trainer was Jimmy O'Farrell. Jimmy O'Farrell. Yeah, Jimmy O'Farrell was like my first trainer. He was, uh, he was, uh, he owned the gym. He he ran the Star City Boxing Club. It was the first gym I went to, and uh, you know I, I hung around for a while. You know what I mean? Before I did anything, I actually got I was I was I was in and out of the gym, and uh, I went went I went I went to the gym one day. And it was like, hey, it was a Friday. And it was like, hey, we going to the show. We going to a uh, show. You want to go and check it out? You know, see what it's like. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, he said because it'd be good for me to see what it's like. And uh, I said, all right, cool. And I never forgot. We jumped in the car, and the gym in Star City was right next to the, um, the, the 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 parkway, the highway. And we jumped on the parkway. Uh, I think it's the Bell Parkway, and we were headed towards the Verrazano Bridge. And I never forget thinking about the movie, um, what is it, with John Travolta, Saturday Night Live, no, Disco, what was it called? Um, John Travolta, when he when he's dancing, right? Uh, yeah. Saturday Night Live. 
Was that Saturday Night, or Night? Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Fever? Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever. We're probably, it's probably all wrong, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Yo, I was thinking about that movie, right? And I was like, man, just thinking about that movie as we was going over the bridge, it was like dusk, you know, it was like seven, seven six o'clock, something like that. And this is my first time ever going to an amateur show. And uh, we, we go over the bridge and I'm thinking about that movie because I remember the part, I think the guy jumped off or fell off the bridge or something like that. And I'm thinking about that movie and <laughs> we get to the show and the, the guy training Jimmy O, the guy who took us, I never forget, it was a guy named Felipe Gomez. He was fighting, you know, young, he was a kid. I was like 16, he was 15. And he was supposed to be, he was, he was like a amateur star from being young, you know what I mean? Like Junior Olympics, he had 100 fights already. Now we 16 years old, I'm 16 years old, he's 15, I think. Maybe he was just turning 16. And I went to the show with them and we walk in and I never forget Jimmy o was like, you know, making up the, they was making the fights and all that. And the place was kinda of empty at first. And he said, I got light heavyweight. And uh somebody said, We got light heavyweight, who who you got for him? And he looked at me, he said, I got my boy right here. And he looked he looked at me. I had never fought. I had just came to the gym a couple of times. Oh, this is when you fought the guy that fought like three hundred times and you fought twenty. Nah, this is my first fight. Oh, this is your first fight? My first Jesus. amateur fight. Uh, wow. I, I just go to hang out. Twice. This podcast is brought to you by Monster Energy. Tear into a can of the meanest energy drink on the planet, Monster Energy. It's the ideal combo of the right ingredients in the right proportion to deliver a big bad buzz that only Monster can. Monster packs a powerful punch, has a smooth, easy drinking flavor. Athletes, musicians, co-eds, road warriors, metalheads, geeks, hipsters, and bikers dig it. You will too. Monster Energy is more than just the green OG. Monster has Monster Ultra, Juice Monster, Monster Hydro, Rehab Monster, Dragon Tea, Monster Max, Muscle Monster, and many more. Buy on Amazon, buy on Walmart, or go to monsterenergy.com and believe me, you'll find a place. Unleash the beast. Monster Energy. Yeah, I just go to hang out. He said, yo, you want to go with us to the show? You don't hang out. We'll see what it's like. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll go. I don't got no boxing trunks. I don't got no mouthpiece. I don't got nothing. No, I'm just going to the gym. Yeah. And I ain't never had no boxing boots. No, I haven't went a couple times. So um, we get to the fight. And he throw me in. I'm like, nah, I, I can't do it. He was like, he was like, nah, you got to. I was like, nah, I can't. He was like, well, listen, if you, if you, if you don't want to get, uh, if you want to ride home, you know what I'm saying, you have to fight. <laughs> So I was like, another, yeah. another one of these ride home Jeez. time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, you serious? Go again. <laughs> I was like, you serious? I was like, come on. He was like, you got to fight. I never forget. They cut my T-shirt off. Oh, I had on a white T-shirt, oh, cut the sleeves off. Um, I fought in the kid trunks. I was like 170 pounds. <laughs> The dude must have been 110 pounds. It was some tight shorts. <laughs> and I had on sneakers and tube socks, bro. Some Larry Bird shorts. Oh, man. <laughs> Larry Bird shorts. And, and I had on tube socks, man. And my first fight with sneakers on. And I won the fight. I dropped the dude. Um, I look good, man. I was imitating Muhammad Ali. Funny. I was imitating Muhammad Ali. They used to call me Ali. So I was imitating Muhammad Ali. Got dropped in the first round with a body shot. And look, and when I, when I looked over at Jimmy O, he looked at me, and said, "You're walking home uh, if you don't get up." I got up, <laughs> I got up, dropped, wound up dropping him in the third round, but I was beating him up so bad the crowd was screaming, "Ali, Ali!" was crazy, and um, you know, it was the beginning. It was the first time I honestly champ. It was the first time in my life that I had ever won anything, and it was the first time in my life that I felt good in a sense. The first time, whereas. Uh, people noticed me, and not in a negative way, whereas when I had got evicted, I was looked upon bad. Now, I had won this fight, and these strangers was cheering for, cheering for me. And i never forget, on the way home that night, we was in a big old Cadillac. Jimmy O had a big Cadillac called White Cadillac. And I had top my, of the world, boy. Yeah, right? I had my trophy in my hand, and I was just looking at the trophy. And I was like, wow, this is the first day I ever won. You know, field day in school, I never won a race, I never did nothing. I can't catch nothing. Uh, hey, I got a trophy from boxing. Took it home that night, watched it. Actually, I was living, was I homeless then? I don't know how the place to stay there. I don't remember, but wow. I, I had that trophy with me. I kept that trophy with me for a while. And um, 
Yeah, man, that was the beginning of, you know, a life a life for me. Again, I, I grew up with a lot of people, man. A lot of people went to jail. A lot of people died. A lot of people, um, you know, they had horrible lives, man, until they died. And, again, man, I never had it easy, champ. I'm not trying to, you know, throw a pity party for myself. But, again, it's, if you're a kid out there, you're a male. Man, forget kids. A male, man or woman, and you're going through it right now, trust me, champ. Keep swinging, keep fighting because you never know what's around the corner for you. You feel me? Every day I wake up and I put deals, I work on deals, I, and I hustle, hustle, hustle. Why? Because one of them gonna hit, two of them gonna hit, and when sooner they do, oh man, sooner or later, if I keep swinging, huh? Yeah, yeah. one's gonna hit, man. Man, I don't, I, I don't stop believing that I'm gonna be become a billionaire. Yeah, something gonna hit. You feel me? I'm working on big projects. I'm 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 surrounding myself around people that's working on big things. I'm networking with the right people. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting myself in position, using my celebrity, and using who I am. I'm a friendly. You know, I don't want I don't lie and I don't steal. I don't want to hurt people. You know what I'm saying? I made mistakes. I feel sad for them. I, I, I look back on it, and if there's anyone out there that I've ever wronged, I apologize. But I don't wrong people. You know what I'm saying? I try not to. I have I have I yes. When I do it, I live with the guilt. Because for for some odd reason, I got a heart. You know what I'm saying? For some odd reason I care. For some odd reason I have feelings that I can't be like, oh I don't care. You know, I I, I other day I was on the internet and um um a guy was slandering me. I put up a post and he put up something about about me um making a TikTok account. And he said, Oh, that sounds like a broke celebrity that that they all doing that blah blah blah, and I was like, damn. So some something said investigate who this was. I don't know why I could have just erased it and kept going, but I went to the guy's page, and um, was some fat guy with a bag of chips and his nut huggers. <laughs> well, actually worse. You know what it was? I, he didn't have no pictures up. Oh. So I was like, man, but the name kind of rung a bell, but it didn't. Right. So I left it alone. The next day. Shout out to my boy Eggy. My boy Eggy called me and was like, yo, champ, yeah, I seen this dude was on live. He was talking grimy about you. I was like, man, I hate when people tell me though, because you know, but it was great. It was great. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I noticed that I seen something like that about that. And I said, um, and I was like, yeah, you know, just a hate or whatever. He was like, yeah, you know who that is, right? And I'm like, nah. He was like, that's so and so. And I was like, really? And I was like, really? Wow. So I had called, I had hit the person. Sent them a message on Instagram, like, yo, what's up? You know, just saying, yo. Because I want to know, like, you know, whatever. I, I, I could have just left it alone. But it was something fishy about it. Long story short, the person typed me back. He was like, yo, what's up, champ? I see you try to call me a few times. What's up? I said, uh, send me your number. So he sent me the number. So now my boy tells me who it is. That's why I said send me the number. He sends me the number. I call him. I'm like, yo, what's up? I could tell. The way he on the way he on you on the call, he's he's recording it. I could tell the way it is. So so he says, uh, yeah, and then it goes like clicks over and does all this shit, and I can tell he's he's recording it. And he says, uh, yeah, what's up? You call me, you know, um, you 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 asked for my number. Why? I said, what's up, man? Um, long time. I said, I, I read your uh your comment, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Why why would you type that? What, what, what comment? What you mean? What you talking about? He wants me to repeat what it said, right? So I'm just like, your comment? Would you say, oh, about what? About the TikTok? Oh, he said, he said, um, you should try dancing, becoming a dancer, right? That's mm -hmm. what he said in the comments. I was like, damn, you know, not that, but I was like, damn. So when I found out who it was, I said, yo, I never did nothing to you, champ. Honestly, I thought you was my friend, and he was like. Yeah, no, nah, I'm just saying, but why, 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 why did that bother you? I said, well, it didn't. It bothered me because I thought you was my friend. I never did nothing to you. I met you on on online. We was always friends. Um, we never had no problems. You know what I'm saying? It was just I was always friendly to you. He ain't nobody. He was a nobody. He's still a nobody. Jealousy. You feel what I'm saying? But it sounds I was like he was using you to get some, yeah, some but spike. I, I extended my hand to him. Yeah, and. Here he was now, and that was a while ago, so here he was now, you know, disparaging me or whatever. And I and I was honestly hurt a little bit, like, because I never did nothing to him. But guess what? That happened to me 10 times. So what's wrong with me? That ain't, this, he wasn't the first person. He was just the first person this month that I've said, yo, come in my house, be my friend. 
welcome. Here's my family. You're welcome. You don't open. You can't. And I, I'm, I can't tell people what to do because I do it wrong. But it's come back to hurt me. So I was like, damn. You know what I mean? But again, you know, I'm tough. But sometimes I'm I'm too nice, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm weak in that way, but it's a living and learning process and you open the door and you, some, you, sometimes you let in strays. You know, I've been known for that. <laughs> you know, I, let, I let strays in. I take in people and it comes back to bite me. But a lot of times, I, that's just the negative part of it. The positive part is I meet amazing people, champ. Yeah. Man, I was in um, Germany and uh, I was in a hotel and you know, I had just started smoking cannabis. It was like, uh, I had just turned 40 years old. I'm 51 now. Uh, I had just, I was like 40, and I had take, taken up cannabis as as an ailment, you know what I mean? I'm from Spain and it's, you know, um, I checked in the hotel and a young brother helped me up to the room and you know, and I was like, damn, I want some weed, man. I was like, I'm scared to death because I heard like, if you act, you know, for, you go to jail forever. You know, I'm yeah, yeah. hearing the stories. So I said, um, yeah, I got cool with him after a few minutes or so. We came to the room, he brought my stuff. And he was like, you know, a boxing fan on top of that. So I said, um, I said, young brother, let me ask you a question. I was like, um, you know, I can get some weed. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, um, he was like, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> he was like, you? I was like, you know, you know no, nah, for my friend. Like, <laughs> right, friend. He said, champ, don't worry, I got you. He left, he came back with some trees, and I was good, right? So next day, I need more, champ. I like it, let's go. Cool. So after about a couple of days, he said, champ, man, um, I can't believe it. I, I told him, come in, come kick it with me. So he, he had to show me where I could go and smoke and all that. Long story short, we got cool. I went to his house. He was from Afghanistan, by the way, right? I went to his house. He couldn't believe it. His whole family came. They met me. Uh, from from from, I'm gonna tell my like, eighty people came. They could. He was like, "You sure is this okay?" I said, "No problem." He couldn't believe it that I came. So again, this happened to me in England. I wound up staying at that guy's house for two months. This happened to me uh, everywhere I go. I meet people. So I've had. The opportunity to meet so many great people from the mantra, from San Let's Go. How cool is that, though? It's amazing. And, and all 80, they're like waiting. They're like, wow, he's coming. Amazing. And I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't believe it. They all came. Maybe I'm, maybe it was 80 people. But, maybe but it was 18. It, it looks like 80. But it looked it like 80, 80 people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was, they all came and they were like, wow. This guy was like, he lived in the projects. What they call projects. Shit looked nice to me. <laughs> you, know <what> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But he was like, um. I can't believe it that you would come from your beautiful hotel. And I was like, man, you cool, you mad cool. You came, you smoke with me, chill with me, and you know what I'm saying? I'm just being me, and I'm just happy to be me, man. But I was saying that to say, sometimes you meet good people, sometimes you meet bad people, man. And it hurts, man, you know? Um, it hurts when it happens because I say it was unnecessary, but man, a lot of people don't have good morals, man. A lot of people don't come from good backgrounds. I told you I came from the towers. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the yeah. towers. It was family based, you know, people working people, people had a nice pool, people had shit. And then when you go out to the world, some people never had nothing. They animals. You know what I'm saying? See, I went through this whole UFO thing. So we had in like every every astrophysicist you could imagine. I mean, fucking UFOs yeah. blinking over. Yeah. Every, everyone almost everyone you can imagine. I flew yeah. in everything. Yeah. And I I'm positive, and I believe in that spirit thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is though. And I think I think there's a grid, and on that grid, so like you came here, now that might save somebody's life. You could have not came here. Mm. You could have went somewhere else to save somebody's life. Yeah. Like you went and you asked that guy for weed. Yeah, you made that whole family happy. Wow. And on that grid, somewhere wow. within that grid, every decision you make, wow, is the grid that yeah. takes you somewhere in your life. Yeah. And then at the end. If you found self, then I think you either go to another dimension mm. or you go up with the spirit spirits. And until you find self, so like even though you were two-time champion, whatever, look what you're doing now. Maybe that's what you're meant to be here for. Facts. You know, that, that's what I got from all these. I believe uh, in Star Wars, so don't believe. I believe, yeah. no, I really believe that. They travel the universe. Oh, I think they're fucking here, too. Yeah. No, 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 not here. I don't believe in UFOs. No, I no, not UFOs. Because you know what I said to them? Star Wars, like traveling, like real talk. Like, yeah, no, real. <laughs> space travel. Yeah, space travel. I say to all I'm of them. crazy, though. No, I'm fucking crazy, too. Uh, <laughs> I, I, he, I, I drive him nuts I'm crazy, champ. Because I say to these guys, but I, I, 
I say to him, and I say, if you can get here, why in the hell would you come in a UFO? Jeez. Right. So if you can come a billion light years away, right. well, you're going to fly here in a fucking UFO. If you can bend time, you're going to come here in a UFO. Right. You can come here as like an avatar or, right. you know, a spirit or whatever. You can come right. here in a damn Visible. shift. You can come in a ship. A ship. Right. For what? Right. You can already get here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I never thought about it like you that. You know what I mean? Why would you come in a ship? Mm. You wouldn't, because if you can already bend time and, and be like, you know, and fold time or, or have space push you or all that other craziness with the dimension thing, if you can cross dimensions, why in the world would you come in a ship? Wow. See, we, I, we went this materialistic bullshit route, but past civilizations like the pyramids and all them, they weren't so worried about what shirt you had on, whatever. They were all together. And I think that's they they valued nature and and one tribe and tribe and stuff and and not like who has what who does this I mean it was the king that will cut your head off if you don't do the right thing but that you know I just think that others I, I, I I'm, I'm a little I I, I <laughs> let me see <clears throat> when it comes to the pyramids and the people who occupied them I truly believe that. The people that occupied them have nothing to do with the people who built them. It's Ten thousand years apart, maybe. I think it's more than that, maybe right? Maybe more. Yeah. Twelve thousand, fourteen, fifteen. Who knows? Mill. It could be a hundred million years. We don't know, right? Yeah. The people who occupied the the any pyramids or tombs, they just did that. They occupied them. They didn't build them. They all said it. Yeah. If you look deep into, yeah. You know, Egyptian culture and, and history, they say we didn't discover the pyramids. I mean, we didn't build the, the pyramids. We discovered them. They was here. They wasn't discovered. They was here when we came. The Mayans, say they found out new research saying they was here when we came. Now, let's think about that. Mm. Do we think that the same people that was doing sacrifices, eating hearts, are the same people, right, that built some such, that type of technology, you know, that type of uh, mm -mm. structures? Come on, think about it. Well, I, I do. I, I did see the like facts from uh, what's his face. Seventy six different civilizations were here. So you know who knows how long ago, but <laughs> right, it was ever yeah. the one that didn't right. that was not eating hard sin, and, yeah, and yeah. you know that we're all one. You, you know that's what I think. I, mean, I don't. I'll see how else it could other be one done. mother. That's it. One mother. What? Come on, think yeah. about it. One mother or multiple mothers because some. What is it? Some uh, species can. Procreate but without, you know, yeah, within themselves. And maybe women did that before. Well, they can look at um, uh, kangaroos. I, what was the ones that they left the wolves out, and then the kangaroos went nuts? I, I think it was kangaroos, or it was, it was one. It was some animal, and the animal. I wish I could remember which one. I think it's a kangaroo, but I could be wrong. But it's like a kangaroo. So when their when their species goes down, instead of the mom having four pups just by genetics or DNA or whatever you want to call it, it will have 10. Like a wallaby wow. maybe. 20 yeah. to, wow. to, to keep the species alive. So what had happened was in certain areas, they left wolves out. They left them out and they moved them from where they were. Well, the wolves would go after that animal. I could be wrong. I thought it was a kangaroo, but can you Google that? Yeah. They left these wolves out and the wolves, that they would eat kangaroos. And he'll find out that I'm wrong. That's a different animal. That's cool. So, I get the point, though. Yeah, yeah. So then just by nature, the mom will go from having 4 to 10 to 20 to 30. So now the species went wild, and now they're in Florida. They're jumping around. Uh, I think Texas, they're all over the place. There's Rabbits? a big problem now. Uh, wolves? California, the wolves were eating the babies. Wow. And, and almost making them extinct. But by nature, they would, they could, the mother could have 10, That's going crazy. by what you said. Yeah, so yeah, if, no, if they could do that, yeah, humans then who the man. hell says that, you know, years ago, humans can't do it. We're just on some weirdo fucking so, shit right we now. We don't know shit. I, you know, it's funny, the, the good part is, the funny part to me is, as much as we think we know, we don't know shit. I was just talking to my friend, shout out to my boy, Kenny Green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, we was just having this conversation the other day. Now just think about this, right? If you take away the phone right now, right? Yeah. The phone, the computer, whatever, right? Which is the phone is a computer. Um, most people are stupid. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it. In the last 30, 40 years is when people start getting, you know, smarter in the sense of information being transferred. People will have all the words we have now, the vocabulary. 
People talking about melanin and shit. They didn't even know what the <laughs> fuck melanin was. You know what I'm saying? They didn't even know what melanin was. People don't even know shit. They know people been stupid. Think about it. Listen, my boy was telling me, Kitty Green, he's stupid. He's funny. He said, yo, Chad, if you was talking to somebody right now, you take away the internet from from most people for the next 20, 30 years. Oh, boy. When you have a conversation with them, they be talking gibberish. Yeah. Gibberish. Well, at least you can have a conversation instead of them going like this. <laughs> yeah. They be talking gibberish because the internet has allowed us technology. To be dumb. To, 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 well, well, no. <laughs> to expand our thoughts, our our, our Vocabulary. We most humans think about it. You only know what you're taught, right? True. So if you if you if you live in the mountains somewhere and the people ain't teaching you shit because they don't know shit, you ain't learning shit. You get what I'm saying? So our phone is allowing us to be able to learn new words and look up. And, and, and this is the, the the most time in history that we know that in, in, in past current history. People talking got better, you know, education. And you can learn. Everybody got a phone, man. More, when I was a kid, a lot of people were stupid. They couldn't read. Everybody can read now for the most part because they had a phone. Right or wrong? Right. Think and, about in the seventies and if you're in the sixties, people were stupid. You're right. And if you're on like WhatsApp and talking to somebody in China, you can translate it, and you can have a full <laughs> right, yeah. That's right, right, yeah. yeah. So we think of how how much technology has helped. People have gotten so much smarter than ever before that we know, but. They could have been ten times as smart as before. You know what I mean? To build what they've done, and you know, we just—I think everything got wiped out, like they Make say. Sense. Everything got wiped out, and we—we are—we are, um, we are, you know, a species with, with, with amnesia. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. my boy says, what's his name? Uh, Grand Grand Graham Hitchcock. Grand, Graham Hancock. Yeah, Hancock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm terrible yeah. with names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you get like that. I've been hitting the head a lot. <laughs> Let's go, champ. Did you find out what animal that was? No, nah, but I did find that a, ready for this, a ocean sunfish. Ready? Lays 300 million eggs at one time. Wow. Wow. But they're also on the... Verging, verge of endangered list because they're very vulnerable. So all those three hundred million, not a lot make it. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's wild. No, no. See, the, see. Type in like uh, wolf, that's funny, but it's wolf, just three wolves. Wolves were released, and an, and I did. I put kangaroos one. going wild in in states, yeah, and can. they can make more pups at a time. It's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. I think it's rabbits you're talking about. It's like a rabbit, but it... A wallaby, maybe. No. Nah, because nah. those rabbits, they said, are like crazy. Pigs, too, now. They said pigs are like 9 million pigs in the USA. Wild hog, Wild hogs. Yeah. Hogs. Yeah. Wild yeah, hogs. Because they fucked them all up. Yeah. Another thing you went through, Teddy Atlas did train you. Yeah. Right? For a while. Yeah. And then that... We don't have to go through all that. But, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that went. So, I mean, then you had to get over that then, too. Yeah, I had to get over that. Yeah. Now, aside from that situation, you see what they did to him with uh, ESPN... Or whatever, nah. pull up that tab. It's not. I mean, I. I'm not trying to rehash the. No, nah, nah, it's all thing. good. Yeah, it, it's just crazy. You know, but they, I, you know, my whole thing with Teddy Atlas uh, got resolved in one way or another. In the sense of, I was on Mike's show, and I think it might have been after the show we was talking on on, a, on the Hot Boxing Podcast, and Mike said to me out the blue, he said, "Just think how Teddy Atlas must have felt." that he had trained me as a kid, and then here I was making hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, a couple of years later. Just think, he must have been like, damn, watching that and saying to himself, I could be making that money right now. This was my creation, I was part of this, right? So he said, imagine how angry he must have been and hurt he must have felt watching me make money. And it hit me, man, it hit me like a ton of bricks, champ. It hit me so hard, champ. I said, wait a minute, damn. So that's what it was. It was like, imagine, he was training me in 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, and this was the time that Mike was making crazy bread. And he was watching that, training me, and I'm from the same neighborhood Mike's from. I'm from, you know, here, here. how could luck be that way? Of all the people in the world, he got another kid from Brownsville. Um, He's seen the differences in us and, you know, in our personalities. And he's seen Mike was a tougher kid, just a different type of animal. But he also seen there was something to me. And he said, yeah, you're a survivor. You just said, listen, I'm, I am who I am. And um, I think at the time watching what Mike do that and maybe not 
believing that I was going to be able to fill the void in that way. And then, uh, anger, we probably anger because of, you know, what he was watching is why our relationship and why he probably, it was what it was. You know what I'm saying? Because Mike said that out the blue, he was like, he just, you know, Mike is deep, bro. When you talk deep. to Mike Tyson, man, he's deep. deep, man. I can't imagine, I can't imagine uh, being him because that man been through so much. Man, I'm talking about in the history of boxing, I can't, you know, they say Jack Johnson was different. You know, Jack Johnson would go places that you wasn't supposed to go as a black man. He was fighting in front of hundreds of thousands of white people. It's probably him and two of the black people in the whole stadium. <laughs> I ain't doing it, champ. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I, pass, I ain't doing it. Pass, right? I can't do it, champ. You know what I mean? But, um... Yeah, they, uh... I'm no longer no work no longer working ringside because of my persistence and the use of word corruption. So he kept saying the shit was corrupted, and yeah. they they got rid of him. Yeah. And it's just crazy. You can't even yeah. say. And even if there is, like, you can't say that now. You know. Well, you know, the whole thing is, you know, I think we got to put in perspective that prize fighting is just that prize fighting, right? So it's just a business. It's money. It's just, just let it just let people fight you in, in business and money. You always gonna have corruption. Um, stay the hell out of it. Right? Stay the hell out of it. <laughs> do the best you can to be the best you can and keep it as clean as you can. But sometimes you got to just shut the hell up and just do your thing and do your job and hope for the best. And you know, no, no. I think Teddy is a, is is awesome because what he done for the sport in regards to his brand and what he built and his what he went through to, to do it. He. He lost that that working with Mike, and he watched Mike, you know, make millions of dollars, and he had to figure it out, and he did. He figured it out. You know, he trained me, he trained Michael Moore. He went on to train, you know, other fighters and make money and build a brand as with uh, as, as in regards to a commentator, one of the best ever. Um, and then even now with his podcast and everything he's doing now, he's still doing it, you know? Yeah, I, I had him on. He's funny. Yeah, he's he, the best. He's a, he's a funny guy. Yeah, he's the he's, best. I can't imagine he's much different. Yeah. He was much different then than now. Yeah. He's still, I, got, he, I got a different Teddy. He's older now. Yeah. I watch his podcast and I watch him now. And um, <laughs> Betty, I had a young, crazy Teddy. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a good, good and bad, but I had a young... <laughs> I mean, he was crazy. That white boy crazy. <laughs> that's what Talk I'm your shit to guys. That's, that's, that's a bad white boy. Crowd, I'm telling you, man. That was a bad white boy. You don't play with him. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, like, he the type of white boy that go in black neighborhoods, everything. He cool don't like that. Nah, he don't give a shit. A white boy can fight. <laughs> and he was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you from where we from, you want a white boy like that with you. That's going to be able to fight. He can fight. He might start. He, he ain't going to start it, but he might. <laughs> yeah, he, he might. might. And you know what I'm saying? And he, and he with it. So he was he was dope. But we had fights together. We got jumped one time. Me and him got jumped, man. We was out in uh, Mississippi. Some dude started with me on some racist shit. And Teddy wasn't having it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he wasn't having it. You know, he like, what you what you say to my boy? Crack. <laughs> we was getting down. But um uh he's solid dude. He's solid dude. When he with you, he's solid dude. But uh yeah, it was it was an amazing time for me to have been taught by him because I learned a lot, you know what I mean? I learned a lot. But I was always fortunate, man. I trained with um Georgie Benton. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I trained with Lou Duva. I trained with you know I, I I had some hell of a trainers, man. People that I worked with. I'm gonna say in the sense that, that I I passed through uh different places at different times and I was always fortunate to meet the right people, you know what I mean, the right trainers. And you know, just learn tips in here. And that's all I could do is get tips because I was always on the move. You know what I mean? I I was homeless since I was a teenager. So I was moving around. I lived in DC. I lived in Miami. I came down here. I was moving and shaking wherever I could go to get a get a check and and, and fight, you feel me? Yeah, and <clears throat> you might want to get your son, I, I think that you said, uh, to, to fight like an influencer, right? Yeah. Now, looking back, because when I, you know, when I was really heavy into boxing, mm -hmm. it was like your fights, the Tyson fights, uh, Roy Jones fights, those. I never thought in a million years like a, a YouTube guy would fight another YouTube guy. You know what I mean? But yeah. what do you think of uh, Jake Paul? Uh, amazing. What he's done in and, and, and great form and, you know, I was part of, you know, early in the, his career or, you know, his, his uh, boxing career. I helped those guys out. I got him a trainer. I worked with Jake a little bit. 
And it's amazing. I've seen it, though. I've seen it's nothing new for me because I was right there. I've seen it. I said, yo, this I was kid, it's going to blow up. I was surprised how good he was. Yeah. Oh, no, I knew that. No, I ain't going to front. From day one, I could see he had something. You know, he got a little meanness to him, too, so he wanted to do it. And, uh, you know, he he, he he did great. He did great. He going to do great. I think he got a fight coming up real soon. And, uh, you know. Jake's Jake's Jake Jake, Jake going to be all right. And then you have like the weren't you going to fight an MMA guy? I mean, I know you did the how how'd you like that one? You went, didn't you go to Japan? Yeah, and, and you fought, you fought a how does it feel to get kicked in the, uh, shit. the shins? Uh, worst yeah. ever. <laughs> worst ever, champ. I, that's yeah, crazy yeah, shit yeah. over there, yeah, right? Kicked the shit out of me. Nah. I went over there. Yeah, I was great. I went over there a few times and um I love sushi, so I, that was one great thing. <laughs> I love sushi and um Aren't they quiet? Food, Aren't they quiet? Like there's no it's not like the US where everybody's yelling and everything. Yeah, they're not like, you know, it's different. It's different, but it's different. You, that's good for you too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you go different places. That's the, that's a fact. Like I was just on the phone with a friend of mine on my way here. He was like, Yo, I want to thank you because uh when I was young, man, you you brought me out of town and you showed me a different life that I would have never thought thought of had I not seen and it's like you know back in the days they used to have something called fresh air fun where they take you out yeah. the city and they take you on a trip or fresh something right? Could, yeah. yeah right they yeah. take you to someone's house with like a white family or something like that oh, shit. <laughs> word up and then they'd be like yeah real talk they take you out the hood and then you see something different you'd be like wow you feel me and it helped a lot of kids because when you see a different environment you're like yo wait a minute it's not just projects everywhere the corner store you're like wow and that it helped me a lot because my mom used to take me down south every every uh, every summer to where she was from. We go to Philly, we go to Jersey, and it was houses. It was houses, you like actual saying? houses. Yeah, a house, not a tall a tenement building. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Yo, it's something different, man." You know, when you see something different, so you know that's another thing I want to do with my program, Let's Go Champ Foundation, and I want to give kids the opportunity to take them places, take them to a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. Take them, you know, they never. Some kids never ate at a five star restaurant. They don't know how to put their knives and forks together. They don't know Such what you know. Idea. what I'm saying they don't know how to eat properly. You know what I'm saying? So I want to take kids out the hood. Or I, I want to use that hood. I want to teach kids how to be men and women, eat right. You know what I'm saying? Have the right conversation. I'm not the most etiquette person when it comes to my uh, vocabulary, but I want to learn too, so we can help each other. We can we can, we can talk about yo champ. Using better words, you know, and that's what a lot of time when people curse, they don't have the the correct vocabulary, so they use a curse word as a you know what I'm saying. It's, I, it's, I, I've been using the f word as yeah. a time since I was <laughs> yeah. like, since I was born. I, I've yeah. been trying that. Yeah. I used to be real bad. Me but. too. Me too. I try <laughs> same thing with the word nigga. Yeah, I use, I replace it with the word champ. That's what I said. That was up, like, I, I, I get give it to that. Was <laughs> that, you know that what I'm saying? Slick. I just replace it because it helps me and it helps the conversation. It breaks the ice from the beginning. When I call you champ and they call me champ, we we okay, we cool. It ain't no beef. It's like it's cool. You know, you, what, you mean? know what else it does for for a guy like you, like for a guy like me, or or, or somebody in another environment. It's like we're both champs now. I, like oh. you become on equal level Respect. because you know you look up and you're Shannon Bridge, Jesus Christ, you know two two every way top of me. What's up, champ? And you go, whoa, this guy just called me champ. Yeah. And then all that kind of goes, and then you look at you as more of like just. Shannon. Yeah, you know, just, I mean? you know that you don't want to get hit by. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when people when when you know, again, going back to what I was saying, sometimes, you know, you could be, when you say champ, people could put their guard down. You know what I'm saying? I put my guard down a lot. That's and, what I meant to say. Yeah. And not somebody where like champ yeah. make, makes you feel equal, but I yeah, meant to you the can guard. put your guard, you can yeah, put your guard down. Right. Like, you know what, we ain't on it, we just we just champing, yo. So we you're champ. teaching me vocabulary. Yeah, we just champing. That's all we champing, that's it. You champing, I'm champ, and we champing it together. What's up, champ? Yeah, all good, champ. We can just relax. And when it's all anything else, yo, uh, it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's a little intense. You know what I'm saying? Or are you Let's just, just chill out? Or you sit next to that guy and you know he thinks he's God gift on earth, and you're like, oh, here we go. Oh, it's no. just gonna be one of these. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. No <laughs> but that's a really good idea because like you, you, you know when you say you take someone out to dinner that never wants even like a cheesecake factory. Facts. 
Now you want to go back to that cheesecake factory, right? <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. You start getting appetite again. Going back to what I was saying earlier. Now, what can I do to take a girl out to the cheesecake factory? That's and then you start seeing like a Ruth Chris. That's right. What do I got to do? And that little one time that you took him to the cheesecake yeah. factory for 50 bucks could change everything. Man, when I was a kid. So people don't realize that, yeah, champ. Facts. When I was a kid, I was working, in a, I was trying to get a semi youth job. I don't even think I got it. But my goal was to get enough money to take a girl on a date to Beefsteak Charlie's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beefsteak Charlie's, yeah. Yeah, yeah Beefsteak. It was, it was like Jim Steaks for us. It, yeah, you walk in and you leave your like <laughs> onions. You know, like, shit. They had a spot called Beefsteak Charlie's downtown Brooklyn. And I was like, yo, I'm going to get some money and I'm going to take a girl on a date. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. Beefsteak Charlie. That was my goal. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I never I never made it, but <laughs> yeah. but it was all good, you know what I mean? I was trying to get that money, packing bags, doing whatever I could do. Now you just went right to the palms. Oh man, nah, man. <laughs> nah Peter Lugas, man. That's my spot when I'm in New York. Not nah, Brooklyn Chop House when I'm in New York. But you know, Philly got some good I would you know my shout out to Jimmy Benz, man. That's my oh, man. Yeah? Many years. Yeah, yeah. Many, and Jimmy J Benz Jr. Shout out to him as well. Those are my people, Philly. He was my lawyer for many years. And I would go to Philly uh, all the time, man. Some of the best food in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nothing yeah. Like, I've tried to find something close down here, but and great women too. Great oh, women. Oh yeah, yeah. Great you know, women. I trouble. Yeah, yeah. Philly got some. Yeah, the women oh, different in Philly. Stay the fuck away. They different. They, they, different. they yeah. different in Philly. They yeah. cool though. They yeah. cool. And women. Jersey, they'll just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> they just cool though. They got different attitudes. They cool women though. Yeah, Philly's got the the women with the attitudes like, all right, okay, I'm cool with whatever. Yeah, Jersey got the attitude where yeah. they'll kill your ass. Yeah, pretty much. Like, forget about, uh, you know. <laughs> Mad and and they'll throw all your shit out and then kill you. Yeah, man. you know what I mean. <laughs> Philly girls is cool. Shout out to all the Philly Philly women, cool women. Now, when when you were coming, I mean, all these fucking knockout. I mean, your record's crazy, man. Mm. What was your training like and your diet like? Pull up uh, tab seven. I put together a little couple. Of clips. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, I, I put a little bit t- together, but um, d- like how far in advance? Play this and that. Uh, fucking, I mean, he's got. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Watch this, bro. Oh, that was like a little. Oh, oh. God. Oh. Look at that. Hey, oh. hey. He, don't oh. know, he don't know where he's at right now. Oh, oh. Now, now he really does. Jesus, go <laughs> check. Okay. Oh my goodness. Body shot. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm done. <laughs> now watch this. Oh. Yeah. Good, yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Boom. Right in the fucking wall. That gives wow. me, man, you can, that's the cannon right there, thank boy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Congratulations. Wow, thank you, bro. I look back at that and laugh. I always snap. Remember that? <laughs> Too funny. Do you remember that? Or is it like kind yeah. of blurry? Nah, I do actually. When I watch the clip sometimes, I'm like, damn. You know, I always remember, for some odd reason, when I think of any fight, I always think about the night before. The, automatically, when I think about a fight, I think about, I can always remember the night before. For every fight that I've ever had, I have to think back to the night before. I can always remember what hotel I was in the night before, and for some odd reason. So, if if you don't mind, tell me the night before and the day of. Like, when do you stop eating? Um, like, what did you eat? You know, for me, it was always some form of anxiety because I was born asthmatic. Uh, I always had problems with asthma growing up. So when I got into boxing, that's another thing that you uh, overcame. Man, uh, yeah, that was the torture. How do you become the the fucking heavyweight champ twice, twice, twice. with asthma? And and as a peanut boxer myself, my coach used to make me run in the sand. Mm. He's like, no, oh, oh, no, 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 we're going to Jersey. Yeah. Like, so what the fuck are we going there for? Yeah, because you're gonna wake up and run in the sand at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did it with yeah. asthma. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Congratulations, I, by the uh, way. Thank you, champ. Thank you, champ. Well, you know, it was tough. I had no choice. Again, I fell on the spikes. <laughs> you know yeah. I fell on the spikes. I had to get up. I, I had no choice. You know, it was it was hard, especially in the winters. You know what I'm saying? I would always get sick in the winters. I had, like, cold-induced asthma. What about other countries? Did uh, the air bother you? Nah, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't really do much other countries when I was young. I went to Poland on the amateur USA team. 
I went to Ireland as well. But nah, the weather was a little cold in both places, actually. It's kind of the coldest places yeah, you can pick there, yeah. boy. It was pretty cold. But um Yeah, the night before and the day of. Take me through the method. Uh, you know, stressing, thinking, damn, I gotta make this happen. You know, for me, my back was always against the wall. So I always had to be like, yo, fighting on my back. You know what I'm saying? I had to be fighting on my back. I get, I gotta get a place to live. I gotta, you know, I gotta figure this out. You know, now I got a kid. Now I gotta figure this out. You know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta make a play. I gotta win the fight. Cause if I don't win the fight, uh, it's over for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting a call back. I'm, you know, it's like a, it's like being an actor. You know what I'm saying? You gotta make a good film, and hopefully you get picked up for another film. You gotta, you know, the show business, champ, and the prize fighting. Uh, it's a business. You gotta get in there, and hopefully that you can, you know, you can make money and sell seats, sell tickets. Be a, be a, you know, I always had to figure out how can I sell tickets. You know, I was homeless. You know what I'm saying? And but you were dropping. You dropped what 37, 40 guys in the first round. Yeah. So that's why I want to know what the hell did you? When did you stop eating, and what did you eat the day of? Oh, okay. Well, again, the anxiety of having to win, the anxiety of knowing that I had no choice was a huge factor in winning because the night before I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I got to win. You know, the day of I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but guess what I did leading up to that? I trained because I knew I wasn't going to get no sleep the night before. <laughs> I know it. So I was like, yeah, I got to get in shape. So I had to go run, work out, do what I had to do. So this way I know that night before I'm up thinking fight night, bell ring. I'm, I'm out the gate. Like a horse out the gate, I'm out the gate because I know that I gotta make it happen. I got fair speed, and I know that I I got good ability to fake. You know what I'm saying? When I fake, when I faint them and they bite, I'm getting them. And let's go, champ! I'm taking advantage of because I, it, it, it's it's now or never. You know what I mean? Some dudes would say, um, if you can make it out of the first five rounds with Shannon Briggs, you're gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? So I had well, to, well being that 40 out of 60, they didn't. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be okay. They said you're going to be okay once you get them in the late rounds. And it was true because I wasn't built physically my life. I was born weighing less than two pounds. You know what I'm saying? Less than two pounds. Again, that's why I tell any kid out there, if I can make it, you can make it. I'm Holy telling you. Holy shit, really? Weigh, yeah, no, no, no brother and sister less than two really? pounds. Wow. A, a little baby and shit, premature, mm. under, underdeveloped lungs. Um, and you know what? I did it, man. I did it. I didn't give up. I kept, I kept, you know, when you don't have a choice, I told, I told my son this morning, you know, sometimes the problem with two kids is y'all have choices. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? If you don't have no choice, man, you gonna get out there and do it. You know, if I, and, 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 and it still has to be opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity for me was packing bags, selling newspapers, trying to hustle. I sold watermelons. You know what I'm saying? I did everything I could do to make a little, a little living. And um, I'm, I was saying something earlier, and I'm, and I'm glad I remember now. Um, I was afraid to go to jail. Yeah, it's a big factor. What I was saying earlier, and I, lo I lost the train of thought, but I was afraid to go to jail. I didn't want to get raped or some shit like that. And I think because the kids don't have to worry about that no more. They're like, I'll go to jail. It ain't that bad. Yeah, I didn't want to go to jail. I didn't want to get raped. I didn't want to get nothing to do with prison and um, being abused physically So or you know, sexually. So... I think that was a big factor in me saying, let me take my ass to jail. You know, it hurt when I shit. I know I can't take it in the ass. Uh, man, you know yeah, I, mean? man, you I know I can't take it, so I, I knew me. I would get a uh -uh. job, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I work 90 jobs. <laughs> uh, sleep. It hurts sometimes when I take it shit. I know I can't yeah. take it. So. Uh, yeah, you know, you don't so get a one day. <laughs> I know one thing with me. I would stay my ass out of jail uh -huh. and, uh, you know, get a job. So that's what keep, keep you out of jail, man. Keep you out of jail. Safe living, you know what I mean? Um... You know, safe living, not going to jail, not messing up my record, wanting to be, um, you know, wanting to be uh, free. You know, watching my father die in prison, watching my mom die on my birthday of an overdose. Uh, those things scarred me. Those things made me think about, you know what? Damn, what do I do? Okay, I know what I do. Don't give up. Keep keep fighting. Keep, keep something's gonna work out. I still believe I'm gonna become a billionaire one day. And you will. I will. I believe. I I truly believe that. You know, my opportunity. I don't know how it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I think I know it's gonna be in business. So I, why? Because I love what I do. I really love business. I truly love. And what we keep saying is, as long as you keep swinging, something's gonna hit. Man, keep throwing enough shit against the wall. Something's gonna stick, right? You know, and um, 
that's where I'm at in life, man. I'm still building myself and my brand. I'm still learning every day on how to survive. You know, it's not easy, champ. It's not easy. Especially now. Yeah, and I, I realize that I suffer from depression. You know, I suffer from depression. I sure. Suffer from, sometimes time it's chemically related. Sometimes, sometimes sure. like your testosterone is low. Yeah. You're not eating right, man. What's gonna happen? You're gonna hit that bottom, man. No matter what, you you aging. We living in a time where you watch television or the news and you see. Uh, this is happening in the war. And nothing but depression. No, nothing but depression. Every TV man. show. Man, man depression. And then you got the, the race bait in and you got the, the whole black and white thing. But, Crazy. you know, I want to say to that, man, one mother, we all got, we just got different shades of a color. You know what I'm saying? But we all human. You know what I mean? Some of us lighter, some of us darker. But we still got two eyes, two your nose. Yeah, if we fortunate, two legs, all right or wrong. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. you know, some things going to separate us, but we all human, champ. End of the day, if aliens came down here and said, I'm killing all humans, we'd have to fight together, right? Yeah, you have to forget about all this other <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I'm killing all humans. <laughs> yeah. I don't got nothing to do. I don't care what color. We be fighting together. Right? right, man. And I want the Spanish guys first because they work the hardest. <laughs> right, man, shit. I and I need races. I got, I got man, mad friends. But I need everybody. I need every color. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't judge people nah, of color. Hell. I don't judge people of sexual orientation. Uh, I don't yeah. care. Shin, I, I really don't know where the fuck that came from. Because like when I grew up, like people used to have this stigma with Italian people and black people. Yeah. If you go to Italy. Everybody will tell you over there. Yeah. There's African American and Italian people, but but they just create this fucking divide thing, and, well, it, and we're all the it's same. It's natural. It's natural. People feel like you know, people clan up, man. People clan up. People want to be with their own. Then there's people who f fear people intermingling. This is such a huge part of a world, man. It's, like, it's bullshit. It's just it's just it's just reality. My bro. best friend was Jaron Hayes. It's just reality. He could eat twenty cheeseburgers yeah. and have a twelve pack, and you know he, he was like he was my best friend. People tribe, people are like tribe, yeah. right? Yeah. So people Cult. tribing together, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Italians, black, different people. Then there's people who ain't with that. There's people who want to mix. You know, I always I got this this weird crazy theory. Imagine this. Just let me take y'all through there real quick. Just imagine this. Imagine right now. They found another galaxy and a way that we could travel there. And right now, they found another galaxy that we could get to with 40 million Earth-like planets. 40 million Earth-like planets, right? Uninhabited. Or uninhabited, and we could all different. You say, you know what? I'm Italian. I want to go to the Italian planet. <laughs> I'm black, African-American. <laughs> I want to go to that planet. I'm gay. I want to go to that planet. I'm tr I'm bisexual. I want to go to that planet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you had 40 million planets, right, and everybody get to choose, what would happen? Would these people on this planet say, you know what, those people over there, we don't like what they're doing? But you got you got what you want. You might want a Christian planet, a Muslim planet, you know, an atheist planet, whatever planet you choose. Would people be happy? Okay. It might be some people that say, you know what. We should go kill those other planets because they shouldn't exist. Right or wrong? I'm right. You're a hundred percent right. You, people ain't never gonna be happy. Never. Never gonna be happy, man. And guess what? Another thing. I just want to say this too. Yo, this shit is short. It's quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's over soon. It's gonna be all even. So the time we spend doing arguing and caring and being involved in it, guess what? You are wasting time. This shit is over quick, champ. You know what I relate what you just said to? What's it's that? when, <clears throat> when for me, I'm, I'm speaking for me. When a girl's with a crazy guy like me, and I'm not a normal, I'm crazy, right? And then they go with the <laughs> nine to five guy that fucking is home at five and doesn't speak, you know, doesn't speak his mind, right? They go with the nice guy that comes home and watches the news at five and shit, and that's all great for like three months. But then they miss the crazy guy. Oh, shit. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like when they go over to the mother planets and they're all together, yeah, it's fine for three or four months. But then it's kind of boring. Wow! Right? That's what, that was my yeah. uh, that, that, that was my yeah, uh, pro probably yeah. non-related thing. But you know, I don't know. That, that's Topia, right? That, yeah, it's just how like I, I look at that. Like everybody, you married, champ? No. Okay, you single? No, uh, paying alimony. Uh, okay, and okay. I have a daughter with a uh, another girl. Okay, but. But I think that's dating how, right now. Huh? You dating right now? You said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you go, huh? You get here. What, yeah. You dating right now? No, no, I'm so, I'm with the mother of my child. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't catch that. Part. Hey, you want to get me killed? 
No, no, no. I did <laughs> I not catch that, that part. Okay, no, good. Good for you. Good for you. Good. How old your daughter? Uh, it's about to be three September 1st. What? Congratulations, yeah. Oh, Chad. thanks. There you right. go. There you right. go. Let's At go, first, Chad. it's like, oh, boy, I didn't get the memo in this oh, one. But man. once once they say oh, daddy, the ever, that man. was it. Oh, man, my daughter was a uh, daddy's girl. Still is. Yeah. I love her to death. That's my baby, man. And she's like the the little me. I love her to death, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. I love my kids. All my kids, my two boys, uh, one 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 mother, same my same mother. Uh, shout out to my wife, Alana. Uh, we've been 30 years. Oh, wow. Years. Good for you. Yeah. You never hear that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To Let's the thick and thin. <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, boy. we fight. We go through it. But we love each other yeah, to death, man. It's That's all that matters. Part of a relationship, man. I couldn't be without her. Gordon, I couldn't imagine life without her, man. She's an amazing woman. and uh, She's been by my side through thick and thin. And um, she's just an amazing person, man. You know, I was fortunate to meet her. But my life, the way it's been and the way it went. Um, How'd you meet her? Uh, on a blind date. On a blind date. On a blind date. 30 years. Yeah, that I wasn't going to go on. That I wasn't. Shout out to Erica Stanley. That grid, man. I'm yeah, telling you, that, that grid. grid. Is crazy, champ. Fran will you know? tell you about that one, yeah. too. It's like the butterfly effect. But sometimes you, you say, damn, what if I would have did this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the choices on that fucking grid. I'm telling Sheesh. you. <laughs> when, when we're done here and we go to that spirit, you go back. Yeah. That little Tommy was right. Yeah. His motherfucking grid out there. Let's go, champ. <laughs> yeah, man. That grid is special, though, huh? You never know which way it's going to turn and which way you're going to go in life, man. Right. You never know. That's why you can't give up. You know what I'm saying? Think about, man, I think about sometimes I look at, um, I look at shows and I look at people that did that, like 30 years in prison, 40 years from prison, sometimes for things they didn't do. And I say, man, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. You know what I'm saying? I can only imagine how much pain they must have felt Night after night, sleeping in a, a, a jail. And they didn't dorm. do it. They didn't do it. And then the people who, who did it and regret. And that's another thing I want to say real quick. Um, it's very important, and that's one of the things I want to do in, in helping kids and explain to them how a moment can change your life forever. One moment, you can change your life. Like, literally, a second, two seconds can change your life forever, whereas you're never the same. Like, um, a decision you make now, and you spend the rest of your life regretting it, whether you're in jail, or you decided to drink and drive, and you killed somebody, and you might have lived and got away with it, but you took someone's life. Your conscience might be like, damn. Or you might go to jail, V vehicular manslaughter, right? 10 years, 20 years, whatever years, your life changed forever. Why? Decision you made to drink. Decision you made to get in somebody's car when they might have already done something or have something in their car, you go to jail. You feel me? The decision you made. When I was a kid, one time, I was a young man, I threw a bottle at somebody one time, right? The bottle just missed his head, mm -hmm. right? Had that bottle hit his head, my life would have changed. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. My whole life, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you right now, possibly. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all about decision making and um, split second. So impulses, your impulse. You feel me? I want to talk about that with kids. I want to help kids deal with that because sometimes your impulse make you react and it can change your whole life. I had a friend who got angry and he went and got a gun. Right? And I said, yo. No, after the fact, he, 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 he did something. He um he regretted it for the rest of his life. He went to prison. You know what I'm saying? But before he did it, I told him not to do it. I wasn't with him. He called me and told me he was going to do it because of what they did to him. And I said, nah, champ, let it go. I said, nah. He said, nah, I can't. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they stole something from me. I was like, that's all right. You figure it out. But that ain't going to help. He told me recently he was right. He said, you was right. I'd spent 24, 25 years oh. because I didn't listen. Because of the decision how I felt. That one split decision it's, on it's, impulse. The, the decision making, man. That's what it's about, decision making. You know what I'm saying? Making the right decision where you don't, you don't put yourself where you regret. And every night you wake up, you're looking at the ceiling in a cell. You see, what, one stupid decision that, the, you, that you didn't like think through. The top of the bunk, the top of the bunk, a uh, guy over you. You say, "Man, why?" Or road rage. Imagine you doing road right now. You and you, you and the guy get out at the car light. Y'all beefing. Y'all get to fighting. He fall hit his head. 
You know what I'm saying? I've been in that position before. I got into a fight one time with a dude, and the dude swung on me first. I I'm, I'm, I'm moved back, and I counted. When I hit him, he fell. When he fell, he hit the ground. His head hit the floor. Boom! Mm. I said, oh, no. Good, I killed him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said to myself, I killed him. I hit it. I, I, he swung. I moved back, and my reaction was to come back with my right hand. I hit him right here. Oh, when I hit him, I watched him fall. When he fell, when he fell face forward. When I hit him, he fell. I watched him. His face hit. His jaw hit the ground. Boom! My mind instantly said, Shannon, you killed him. I said, damn. His friend yelled, you killed my friend! I bet, I bet you can still hear that right now. Right to this day. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I said, damn. Uh, I'm, my life going to change forever. Fortunately, there was witnesses and it was cameras to see him swing. Swing you for self-defense. Yeah, yeah. But, but I've been, been, in, been. Yeah, but I've been in a position where they started with me, I fought back, and they sued me and won. <laughs> yeah, and won because I, I defended myself, but they said, nah, you got... You know, all your hands are yeah, a weapon, right? right? You know, yeah. lethal weapons and shit. Lethal. Well, they, they, big they kind of are. They are big they, hands. Yeah, they are big yeah, fucking they, hands. They are. Jeez. Lethal yeah, weapons. Yeah, fuck that, man. <laughs> let's go, champ. Yeah, let's let's go with just this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, <laughs> anything else you could you could take it out? Hey, right? hey, I'm just doing this a bicycle. Chill, champ, chill. So, uh, when, between Foreman and Lewis, who was a tougher fight? Um. Tougher fight. That's a good question. Nah, I mean both of them was. Man, you you, you got to understand. I fought both of them back to back. I, 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 yeah. I'm 25 years old. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 25 years old. I went into, I went into the, I went, I 100 percent went into the the Lewis fight with a with a broken hand. With a broken hand. Broken hand, torn ligaments oh, right shit. here in my left hand. When look at my hand. I went into the fight with that. No, no bullshit. You know, it's over now. It's the past. Not to say that I could have beat him, but I went into that fight with a totally. Well, you hit him pretty. You got some nice shots in with that broken hand. Did I? Well, I know yeah. I'm complimenting. Yeah, thank you, yeah, John. Yeah, did yeah, I? Yeah. Nah, but you know, the truth of the matter, I'm not trying to take no, you know, take nothing off it. Not to say I could have beat him on on my greatest night. He was he was a great champion. You're just but, saying a fact. Yeah, the yeah. fact is. But with that being said. Um, the Foreman fight was a little different. I was focused. I was on point. I came down to Miami. I trained my ass off. I was living in Miami Lakes. I was at the Miami Lakes High School, American. I think every day running on the track, uh, running to the gym. I worked my ass off. My mom had died. Um, you know, the pain was was at me. You know, when the Lewis fight, I had won the linear title. Uh, I put my head, I let my head down. Literally, I had blonde dreadlocks, I let them down. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I wanted, to, I wanted to enjoy the, the fruits of my labor, you know what I mean? I remember. I, you remember. Know? I, I watched the fight. Yeah, yeah I, wanted to, I wanted to enjoy it. I, wanted, I just fought Foreman, had a little couple dollars in my pocket, not much. And, um, you know, I never had enjoyed my life. I never had a good life, you know what I'm saying? I never had a good life. Since I was a kid, I was poor. Um, and And I was poor in a place where it could be seen. Like, if I lived down the hill all my life, everybody poor. But in Atlantic Towers, where I lived at, you know, being broke, people people had money a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So I was one of the kids who probably didn't have a lot. Obviously, we got evicted and all that. But being broke all my life, and then when I made some money, I wanted to live good. So I I, I dropped my hair and would party. I Instead of a saying like that, like what were what was some real tough things with Lewis? Obviously, is is jab, and what what was the toughest thing about Foreman? What was the toughest thing about each? Uh, Foreman was just Foreman, just like a big human being walking you down. I was a kid; I was twenty five years old, and you know I was boxing. I was fast on my feet. I really trained my feet for that fight. I uh, did a lot of ladder which at the time wasn't something that was popular. Um, I did uh, a lot of speed work, speed work on the track with Tom Shaw. At the time, I trained with a guy named Tom Shaw. Um, it was a phenomenal training time for me. He got me in great shape. And, you know, I, I did my thing, champ. I, but he was tough, meaning in the sense where he hit hard. He probably he hit me so hard, I, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it. Felt, his hands was that heavy. And... Um, but what kept me up was my mom. My mom had died. That spirit I talked about earlier, you yeah. know what I'm saying? 
that shit was in me. It was around me. It was helping me get through a rough time. But he was hitting me hard, Jim. I ain't gonna lie to you. He was every time he hit me, I was like, damn, how could it be? How could it be? I was like, it gotta be sudden in his gloves, man. I really wanted to say, yo, check his glove, cause his hands were so heavy, and that every time he would jab me, um, it, it was it was power punch. It was powerful, time. yeah. But um, you know, I it, you know, it was a tough it was a f- tough fight that was probably hard to score for some people, but not for me, cause if you watch this fight with no sound on and not listen to the commentary, and if you don't, if you watch it without any um graphics added to say counting his punches and not mine, I personally had someone. Uh, paid someone to do the uh, counter punch to to watch the punch count, and um, I'll punch them, and this, and and uh, as well as you know, if you judge it from that standpoint, it was a close fight, but I won, and that that in itself was kind of hard because people were like, oh, you know, Foreman won, but he was they love Foreman, you know, he was mm. he was a commentator of HBO, how you know how could you not love him? But um, he's asked funny. What's what's was funny is um, I'm being inducted into the. Atlantic City Hall of Fame this year. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you, champ. And so is he. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. And so yeah. is he. And ironically, um, Darrell Wilson is going to be inducted to the Atlantic City Box Hall of Fame. Oh. He handed me my first defeat. And it was because of him that I was able to get the, the Foreman fight because Foreman watched that fight and was like, he'll fight me because he needed a soft touch. He had just had tough fights with Savarese, Alex Stewart, and uh, I think Axel Schultz back to back. He had gru- grueling fights, yeah. grueling fights. I'm talking about like every fight, his face was blown up, swollen. And then, and um, so he wanted a, you know, a soft touch. So he was like, yo, pick me. And it was after out, out of 50 people on the list, I was the last one, and uh, he picked he picked he picked me. And HBO officials told him no. They like they did their best they could from what I was told to tell him not to take me. They did their best. No, 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 because it was after the breakup with me and Teddy. I no longer had Teddy with me. Yeah. I was just you know open like a target, shoot at him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so he he took me, and it changed my life. You know what I mean? Because I had lost to Wilson, and. Um, you know, I was going through a rough time. You know, my mom had died. I had just had my son. I was depressed. You know, I had been carrying a lot of depression since I was a child. You know what I mean? I had been carrying it, carrying it, carrying it. So I think um, the Foreman fight is where I really went and just trained. Trained, came down to Miami, did the best I could, trained, sparred, and I was in enough shape to go 12 rounds with a legend like that, you know? <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot of rounds with yeah, him. Yeah, it was tough. So, and after that, I was ah, it's over. Yeah. Meanwhile, it was then over. It was really just beginning. Begin. I should have been on point, but I had hurt my hand so bad in the Foreman fight. By the time they made the Lewis fight, I had was about to get my surgery, but I didn't get it because of the Lewis fight, which I was against. I didn't. I didn't stick to what I should have done. I went into the fight. He he won. Um, I made more money, the most money I had ever made in my life. And what was, was the job the toughest thing with Lewis? This episode is sponsored by Aurora. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? For years, this crime rate has been surging and affecting millions of Americans. I'm talking about identity theft, and there's a new victim every 14 seconds. Yet despite this, those who have had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aurora, who is sponsoring this video. Aurora is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all into one easy-to-use app. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. Protect you and your family from America's fastest-growing crime. Try Aurora for free for two weeks and see if you or anyone in your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial today. Go to aurora.com slash MSCS. The link is in the description below. Uh, just getting by that jab? Just everything. Everything with him. It's just, he's strong. Good jab. But, um, you know. Hard puncher? Yeah, punch hard, punch hard. Yeah, but I could fight too, champ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you can Google that. Uh, Lennox I can fight Lewis too. says uh, Shan Briggs was the quickest and hardest hitter he fought. I want you to see it because he did. Nah, uh, you know, I, I've heard that he might have said it. He might not have. But the whole thing is this, right? I wasn't the best Shannon Briggs. And I never really was at my best, to be honest with you, because it was a career ridden with 
um, ups and downs. You know what I mean? And you know, I'm not the only person who was a could have been, but I, you know, uh, I was able to do something, and I'm I, I'm proud of that. I don't walk around and say, "Oh, I was a heavyweight champion." Or I was a guy who was able to get a piece of the title. I was a guy who fought his way out of poverty. I fought his way out of a, a bad situation. You know what I mean? I fought his way uh, out of um, survival. Mode. Survival. You know, not 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 going down. People didn't believe, believe that I could be a boxer. No one believed in me. You know, no one ever gave me encouragement. No one ever told me you're good at something. You know, you're gonna be this one day. Nobody had no hopes for me. I made it myself, you know. So what was that like when you were walking around with two heavyweight fucking titles? I mean, how, how did that feel for you? Like, two? Well, it was at different times, but... But, I mean, still overall. Yeah, yeah. You know? Nah, you know, for me, man, it was always a way to make some money. And and it did, in, in a lot of ways, give me... Uh, it made me feel... As though I was able to uh... read that out, Rob. <laughs> oh, Lennox so Lewis. This is coming from Lennox Lewis. I guess these are the guys. He said, uh, "Best puncher, Shannon Briggs. Fastest hands, Briggs again." Wow. So that's, that's coming from uh, Lennox Lewis himself. Yeah. He said Lennox Lewis called Shannon Briggs one of his toughest ever opponents. Yeah, yeah. One, he's a. That's great to hear, man. Who would have ever thought? Like I said, so I don't walk around. I walked around and saying, wow, I did it. And if I could do it, others could do it too, man. There's no difference between me and any other kid in the world, man. Except, guess what? I fell on them spikes. I'm going to use the new <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I That's fell good on them though. spikes. And when I fell on them spikes, I was like, yo, champ, get your ass That's up. Kind of this shit, get right? your ass up no matter what. And who would have ever thought boxing, the toughest thing in the world, man? I've been in fights, champ. Can't breathe. I, I would go in, I would say it earlier, I go in every fight shook. Cause I said, man, what if I run out of gas? What I'm gonna do? You know, when I lost to Wilson, I couldn't breathe after the third round. I couldn't breathe. I was like, I was, I was, I was nervous. I was, um, I wasn't even nervous. I had, I, 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 I truly believed the wind, the weather. You know, had a lot to do with my breathing. I was, I, but at the same time, I was dead after the third round. I trained my ass off for the fight. Third round, I couldn't gotcha. breathe. I lost to that fight. After that fight, man, I went into straight depression. Everybody turned on me. Oh, everybody walked away from me. Me and Teddy split. Uh, the newspapers went crazy on me. The press went crazy on me. The fans went crazy on me. He was a buzz. He's this. He's that. Um, I went places when I was disrespected, and people, say, you know, would say things to me that you shouldn't say to someone who lost a fight. You know, you shouldn't say to someone, if, especially if they got knocked out and shit, you know, you don't want to say, oh, yo, you got knocked the fuck out. You got knocked out. You don't talk to me like that, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't know. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I wasn't there, right? Yeah. So people say shit to you and you're like, damn, man, you know, they hurt your feelings, you know what I mean? Sure. And you and you want to kick their ass, but you can't. You're like, yo, but I'll kick your ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can't, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was hard for me. To walk around after that fight and be, you know, that I had to say, you know what, you got to deal with it. I don't like them spikes. No, nah, I don't like them spikes. And guess what, you got and that that coming back from that first loss was hard with Darrell Wilson. Everybody turned on me, champ. A lot of people walked away from me. A lot of people was just like, oh, you you ain't shit. You ain't trash. Look, the hype's gone now, okay. and I had to pick it up. No trainer from that point on. That's what's that's what's crazy. He did that with no trainer, yeah, no no. no way. At that point on, I, I came down here and was like, "Yo, I was sleeping in the parking lot at um at the Boston Market over in uh, Miami Lakes. I think it was Boston, yeah, Boston Market. And this was like ninety five. You know what I'm saying? Ninety six, ninety five, ninety six. I was sleeping in the parking lot in my truck and my Land Cruiser. You know what I'm saying? I was like, "Yo, I'm um get an apartment. I got out the when 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 I got an apartment." Uh, what was they call it? It was like a, like you know, a corporate apartment. Yeah, you know what I mean, furnished already. Yeah. The Miami Lakes and shit. They had these big ass bugs in there. <laughs> I was like, damn, <laughs> man. I lost the fight. <laughs> and I look where I'm now, at. now I got a little bug. <laughs> Here we go. Right? I was like, damn. I was. I got a little apartment over there in Miami Lakes. And I'm, I was like, yo, I'm gonna make it happen because the weather. I was. The, I was hot down here, so I got in shape. I came down here, and then before you know, I got the Foreman fight again. Like I said, against all people on the list, odds. he picked me, right? Against all odds. So Darrell Wilson beat me. 
Foreman picked me because of that, and now we're all three going into the Hall of Fame. That's awesome. And uh, upcoming Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, shout out to, you know, Atlantic City, man. Real, real great place, man. My man, Ray McClellan. You the champ, Ray. Let's go, champ. And when how how long before the fights did you stop drinking water? I just want to know because when I was fighting, what they would tell me, or did you no, drink? Stop drink water right before you would drink water. <laughs> drinking water, you got it. Well, I'm, I was always a heavyweight, but I'm drinking yeah. water regardless. What about eating? What, uh, what time was like your last meal? Okay, funny story, real quick. Yeah, yeah no, so, no. So Take I was time. a kid. I was a kid. Um, I was training. I was an amateur kid. It was. I had gotten some trouble. Um, I was back in the gym, you know, my, between, I started like, I want to say 88 and between 88 and 92, I had 30 amateur fights. <laughs> That's not a lot. That's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's like 30 something amateur fights. Cause that means I was coming, just coming and going, coming, coming and going. going. Yeah, yeah. But during one of my, um, my times <laughs> that I came back, it was the, the, it was the last time that I really, that I got serious. Um, my trainer, he was harsh on me too, man. But you know, I had some tough people in my life, man. And I'm gonna say the tough, tough. When you go through tough, tough shit and tough times, it make you tough, man. Yeah. And I never forget this, man. Um, my trainer, I went to the gym one day, and he was like, "Yo, we got fights tonight." You know, again, this is, none, this is years later now. Now I'm better. Now I'm good. Now, right? This is like two years later. Maybe I'm 18, 19, something like that. And he says, uh, "We go into the fights." And uh, I'm like 18. I'm just turning 18. And he says, uh, we're going to the fights out in, um, out in Jersey. I said, all right, cool. So it was like, I, I'm kidding you not, it was like 12 o'clock Saturday. We're going to the fights is Saturday night in, in Jersey, in Neptune, New Jersey. Hmm. And um, i never forget. I said, I'm said, all right, cool. I said, I'm hungry, though. Let me get something to eat. He said, I'll feed you after you fight. I said, well, what time the fight? He said, no, we're on our way now. Mind you, it's 12 o'clock, so we jump in the car. And we jump in the car, and we drive for whatever. It was how long it took the hour to get there, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I said, man, I'm hungry, man. He said, I told you, I'll feed you after that fight. So I said, all right, cool. Well, what time is the fight? And yeah, I ain't fight till like 9 or 10 o'clock that night. And I was starving. And I was so hungry. I told him, I said, I ain't fighting, man. You ain't feed me. He said, I told you, I'll feed you after you fight. And uh, I went that whole day hungry, and he fed me after the fight. We went to McDonald's, and I bought two big bag, two Big Macs, <laughs> and I never forget. I can still remember how they taste. I'm two Big Macs, yeah. but um, he said you fight. He said you fight better when you're hungry. Mm. And I was like, damn, and I was so mad. I was so angry at him. I was like, man, I ain't. But he, he was he was right. So I always went into every fight saying, you know, don't eat. You fight better when you're hungry, and he and it was true. But um, those things like that I went through. But when people treated me bad, it was good. It was good. When people people treated me bad, it was good because it made me become somebody. I would not. I was taught never to talk back, never to curse at adults, never to be disrespectful. I would just be like, Psst, all right, you know what I mean. And I knew that when that bell rang. Oh, by the way, that fight that he ain't feed me. Oh man, I beat that man to death. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Man, poor he was fella, hungry, man. buddy. I'm yeah. sorry. Poor fellow, man. That, that other, man that other extra one when he was going down, man. man he was a big dude, right? Yeah. He was a big dude, and he he was like stocky and wide. And when I was hitting him, I can remember to this day, for some reason, where the fight was at, it was an echo in the building, and all you heard was boop, 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 boop. And I mean, this is me hitting him to the body. And he grabbed oh, me at wow. one point. And I must have like, I don't know what, like like, like a little kid get mad and they go crazy. I said, boop, 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 boop. It sounded like gunshots. Ah, he let me go. Kidneys. And I came with the craziest hook from hell. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> they was like, yo, who this kid? He crazy. He's hungry. <laughs> had a way, had a way. The way to beat him would have, if we would have known this back then, we'd have like uh, food delivered to yeah, his dressing yeah. room before yeah. the fight. Yeah. 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 We're winning. We're that's winning. Right. Yeah. Place the bets on the other guy. That's right. That's if that's I was right. foreman, I would have sent you fucking yeah, 30, fuck. 30, 30 value meals, pizza, to, you know, time to put it under your door a little bit. <laughs> it's crazy, though, because it show you what a hungry yeah. man would do. Yeah. Imagine you starving. You're hungry. Yeah. And I, he made it clear, if you win, you eat. Yeah. If you win, you eat. If you don't win, you don't eat. I ain't eat, man. It was like 12 o'clock when I asked him, I said, yo, buy me something to eat. You know, I was like, yo, come on, man. Buy me something to eat. I'm hungry. Yeah. 
He was like, yo, I, I'm going to hook you up after you fight or when, when we get to the fight or whatever. I was like, for what? The way in? I'm, I, I'm good. Nah, just make sure. He said, you win, you eat. And that's how life is, man. If you win, you eat. You feel me? That's, That's how life is. You guys are always the main events. So they always say 10 o'clock. Never yeah, 10 o'clock. 12, yeah, 12, 10, 12. Up oh, there goes curfew. I'm dead. Yeah. I never you forget. I, to this day, we pulled into that McDonald's and he got me them two hot Big Macs. Oh. And the way them burger, when, when I bit that Big Mac, was that, coming about out. That, about and that, that, uh, that Big Mac sauce, special I said, sauce. man, I was so happy. And, and, and the yellow cheese coming down the side. Uh, yeah. I said, man, I was so happy, man. Going to McDonald's after believe. this uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man, but you know what, man? Hungry people do what they got to do, man. That's what I say, man. Like, I had to go through it. I had to go through it. It made me get out there. It made me hustle. It made me work. It made me knock on doors. I, I didn't just... Like win fights to get into boxing and and made it to the top. Nah, I used to go out there and go to the managers and go up to promoters and be like, hey, yo, what's up? How you doing? Here's my picture. And you know, I used to have to know how to move and shake and talk and get a deal and you know get make it happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, it wasn't just about in the ring. I was also managing. I was also marketing myself. You know, I was also figuring out. How do I get PR? How do I get myself out there? Because this is show business, entertainment. You know, I wasn't, um, you know, I had some hard breaks. I had some some mismanagement. I had some bad accounting people with me that took me for a lot of money. And I wasn't always the smartest person when it came to, to be on the top of my business. You know what I mean? I was always trying to be the athlete, but I had to be the athlete. I had to be the accountant. I had to be everything. And then I get, I had the problem of having friends around, you know? And when you got, when you feeding everybody. It runs out eventually. Shit. When the cupboards get bare. Yeah. <laughs> when the cupboards get bare, people start to stare. You know what I mean? They start staring at you like, what's, you know what I mean? What's next, champ? Yeah. So, um, you know, I did that. And that, again, part of growing up. And as I got older, I learned. And that's another, having family. My, everything goes to my family now, you know? I'm a family man, so I'm broke. Everything goes to my yeah. family, man. Well, I, I found that out quick when you I'm telling you, family, kids, but you got one. <laughs> yeah, I got one. Wait till you have more. You're going to say, yeah. man, this kid thing is crazy. I can't believe how expensive <laughs> this shit is. If, if I would have known about these Coco Melon and diaper shit, I should have just invented that. Man, you ain't got nothing, man. I'm telling you, boy. So I, but I'm fortunate my, my yeah. kids work. They try to be progressive and they doing their thing, man. That's what it's all about. You know, instilling it into your kids that make something of yourself. My son, Modeling, um, acting, doing, trying to do some influence of boxing. My other son, he works at the movie theater. Good for him. Yeah, you know, he's 17 now, but he's working. And I'm so proud of him, man. You know what I mean? I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of myself, too, man, because I didn't have to make it this far. I didn't have no help, Jeff. I really didn't have no help. You know, I've been, people been people been putting um, obstacles in front of me all my life. You know what I mean? And making me jump over to him, make, making me jump over. And I know it's okay. I'm used to it now. You know, and that's what gives me belief that I, I'm going to make it. Because if if I wasn't, I wouldn't have made it this far. You know what I'm saying? Now, did you feel, you know, because you had all those first round knockouts. Yeah. Did, did you feel like pressure? Oh, I have to knock this guy out in the first round. Did you ever feel like that after, I don't know, the 20th maybe? No, nah, I always felt like that because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I you have that rounds. many, it's like... Yeah, I couldn't go that many rounds. But the thing is, like, my first fight, if you look at my first pro fight, um, um, I got, I mean, I got punched so hard my first pro fight, man, I got cracked. This dude, his name was John Jackson, uh, he cracked me with a, with a right hand. I was up all night before that fight, by the way. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking about the fight, and I was like, man, I seen him at the win, I was like, man. And he had, you know, a couple fights and shit. And I was like, damn, dude look a little thugged out, but it is what it is. And I was up thinking about the fight. Because I was amateur. Now I'm turning pro. July 24th, 1992, Friday Tuck In. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, champ. And um, 1992, July 24th, and I was up that night thinking about the fight. And here we are. We in the ring now. He, he across from me. I'm across from him. 
this is my first time doing it without headgear. I can't believe I'm doing this shit. Well, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what am I thinking? <laughs> on TV. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I got myself into this here shit. Go, right? <laughs> here we go, oh, right? Oh, boy. I tell you, every time I went through those ropes, I said I should have went to college. <laughs> <laughs> every time. I never went. I, just, I, I can tell you when I watch my fights, when I'm going in the ring, I said right there. At that point, I said I should have went to college. <laughs> right there. But um, I got in there, and uh, first, first the bell rang. And out of nowhere, champ. I mean, he caught me with a right hand. If you watch it when you get a chance, check it out. Pull it up, my pro debut. Yo, he threw an overhand right. He cracked me right here in the jaw. And you can watch it on tape. My whole neck spent every day. I turned right back around and started gunning. You know what I'm saying? Um, I stopped him in the first round. But that one punch, you can hear it on the tape if you listen to it. Pow! That should have knocked anybody out. That first punch could have ended my career. Like it's happened to fighters, but that first fight, my first pro fight, the first right hand I got hit with, pow! Anybody else, my next turn and everything, I took it. I started working. Now, when you got cracked like that, you, you yourself, were you dazed or you were just like you just shook it off? Um, I I, I vaguely remember being dazed and seeing like fourteen of them, yeah. but always remembering the one in the middle was him. As, as well, yep, this is it yes, right here. <laughs> My first pro fight, champ. A man he cracked me. With a very bizarrely head, Shannon Briggs. Blow this up, uh, Rob. John Jackson, a four round. Crack me. This. And to come now, do you remember this like yesterday? To hold yesterday, the, uh, champ. World heavyweight Look championship. Look. There you go. A man who hoped <laughs> to hold it. John Jackson. And one who had aspirations of holding it once, but uh, I dare say hasn't anymore. Now, originally, originally this was on MSG. It had a different commentator, but here he was with one win, four losses. Five outings. You know what I mean? And that was last time out. There you are. There you are. There he is. I'm trying to look cool. Yeah. I really shit in a brick. <laughs> I said to myself, "Damn, I can't believe this." Isn't that funny to see all the way back then? <laughs> is that Teddy right there? Yeah, that's Teddy Atlas. Wow. Or super heavyweight, but... Uh, He's young looking. Apparently sustained a knuckle injury and it ruled him yeah. out, but uh, there are some people who believe that uh, he was rather too bizarre with blonde hair. Oh. Uh, and consequently, he didn't make the trip. Were you the only guy with blonde hair then? Debut. Big things are expected of... Just about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just about. Pro, Check this John out. Jackson, well... Here you go. Watch this. One win. Two of those losses, incidentally, inside the distance. You see that? Yeah, okay, yeah. You see that right here? Yeah. Jackson. You see that right here? Yeah. How crazy was that? Yeah, go back again. Go right. back again, Jim. Jim, check that out. Look at that right here. Oh, right there. Right. No, 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 no. Watch when you catch me. Watch when you catch me. Here you go. Right here. Wow. Oh. See that? Oh. Come on, champ. Oh. Come on, champ. Oh. Come on, champ. Look, look, look. I'm trying to pause it at the right time. Look. Look. Inside the distance. Ah! Right there. From, uh, oh, you still ducked Jackson. that. You could have got hit with a second. I could have got hit with a second. Right? You seen that? Yeah. Go back one more time. Yeah, one more time. It's hard to get it right on the spot. Cause of... But this is professional. Ah, you almost broke my neck, champ. This man, Shannon Briggs. Look at him. Man. And that was like five seconds. Well, four losses and one win. Two of those losses. Into the... I'm trying to get it. Right there. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, I saw yeah. right there. You see that? Yeah. Oh, boy. You see that? Yeah, yeah on, I, I shifted your whole uh, <laughs> neck to the other side. You're like a bird Yo, right there for a second. He trying to kill me. But how in the fuck you duck, you duck the, the one the what, what, he, with what, what is it? He right? came with some more heat. And you ducked it yeah. even after that. Yeah. Yeah, he almost broke my jaw. Uh, yeah, he cracked me, so I took it on the jaw. 99.9 .9 would have went down after yeah, that yeah, one. Right I think he so. was probably like, well, let's go. why is this guy still up right now? He caught me, champ. He cracked me right in the jaw. I took it like a champ, and uh, I, I looked at him. I was a little dazed, and then I was like, you know what? Uh, it's now or never. So, I, you know, and I was at the time, you know, I was just, um, you know, I got my management situation. I was living out in Jersey with my manager, Mark Roberts. Shout out to Mark Roberts. And, um, you know, it was like, okay, Teddy Atlas is training me. You're turning pro. And I was just like, okay, I don't got a choice. I don't got no place to live. You know, you know, they gave me a little money, they gave me a little, you know, place to live, a little rental car. I had my homeboy with me. Shout out to Troy Taylor. He was a huge part of my success in the beginning. Uh, and 
You know, my mom, my mom's was in the streets. My pops was in jail at the time, and uh, you I just was, had the fear. I had, I had, I, no, I had no choices. So yeah. when I, the bell rang. Once he cracked me. And, you know, when you watch the rest of it later at home, you'll see I went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I went crazy. I had to get my get them out of there. And once I did that, um, that was on to, I did it again, I think a month later, a second, third, I kept five, foot. I want to say every month. Uh, one month, I think I fought twice, you know, that year. And um, I had, I wound up getting um, 10 and no by the end of the year. So from Damn. July. 10 fights in here? Yeah, 10 Jesus. fights, yeah. Wow, man. They're lucky if they fight one sometimes now. Yeah, I was staying busy. Yeah. And I was, you know, just, you know, a lot, a lot of times uh, the people that I was supposed to fight fell out. People didn't want to fight me. And I was I was played with that a lot of times in my career, whereas it was times when, um, Especially when I was undefeated, a lot of boys they want to fight me. They say what they want, but they they wasn't trying to fight me. They want the cannon. Nah, and then after I lost, people start coming out the woodworks. But mm -hmm. you know, by that time, it was like you know, pick and choose the right fights because it's about bread. You know what I mean? It ain't about you know just being stupid. Now, having said that, just from being a little box for myself, <clears throat> like Floyd Mayweather, they always like break his balls. But if you watch Floyd with the noise off, me. I mean, I, you would know better than me, but am I? That is the best defensive boxer I've ever seen. Definitely. What do you think about? I mean, I, I mean, if you just watch it with nobody talking and watch how he moves and ducks and dodges, you know, whatever fight it is, he is one hell of a defensive fighter. Facts. I've only seen him. Who? What was the one guy that got him good? De, the De La Hoya. De La Hoya. Other than that, he really hasn't been hit, even when he was fighting like. Crazy guys. Yeah, he's one of the best ever by far. You think so? One of the best ever. Yeah, I think by so far. Too. Yeah. What do you think of all this new yeah. MMA? You know, the UFC, all that. Yeah, it's cool. It's you know, I can't do it. I mean, you know, I tried at K one. I told you, kick the shit. Yeah, out. yeah. But um, I mean, I, you know, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's another sport. It's like wrestling. It's like it's real fighting. It's fighting, damn near. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's great, man. It's phenomenal. It's a huge business. What about when they cross over into boxing? They're going to get knocked out every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I know. He tried. Yeah. Uh, They're going to get knocked out every time. <laughs> forgot his name. What, what's your, uh, if you had your Mount Rushmore right now, your four four heads, who's your Mount Rushmore in boxing? <laughs> the current fighters or in the past? In the past. All Ooh, time. All great. time. All time. My, That's tough. My, 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 my Mount Rushmore of boxing, I would have to say is, Ray Robinson, of course. Uh, Muhammad Ali, of course. Uh, Joe Lewis, of course. Uh, we can add extra head on there if we need to. <laughs> how many? How many? Four, right? Yeah, we four? got four. Total. We got three right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted, so I, I said Joe Lewis, jo Ali. Joe Lewis, Robinson, yep. Ali. Ali. And it's tough. It's tough to say. But we don't know because we don't have footage. But they say Henry Armstrong was one of the greatest fighters of all time. Yeah, Hurricane Henry Armstrong. You look at him; he was a lightweight champion, welterweight champion, and middleweight champion at the same time. I, that's see. I think I, it's, it's funny. It's funny you just said that because I don't remember if it was Teddy when we had Teddy on or someone else. And I can't remember the name, but I remember they said that same thing. So that has to be the same fighter they said. Yeah. Because remember they said he was the champ in all the different weight classes. Yeah. That has to be the same guy. Yeah. Same. The only one. I don't know. You know, I don't yeah. know that, that well. But Lightweight, we welterweight, and middleweight yeah. champion at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. And he was trying to fight Joe Lewis. Wow. Little dude. Oh. Yeah. Hurricane Hank. So we can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. What he was doing. Yeah. We can't imagine. The ability, because we don't have footage of it, you know, all you know, good footage of it and all that. But and there's other men before him that we don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Sam Langford and different men that they said was, you know, freaks of nature. But the current division, the the, the current man today, mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Because you look at a guy like Tyson Fury, how big he is and how yeah. how he moves, <laughs> man, how good he moves for a big man and, and he his stamina, punches. his stamina, the punches he could take. The punches he could give, man, he can stand up to the he can stand up to Deontay Wilder's power. Yeah. Get dropped. I mean, Dunk get up from up. that shit. Yeah. Come back to knock him out. Like, come on. Wilder hit so hard. So hard. Wilder's probably one of the strongest 
High hitters in history. I mean, punches in history. It's insane. He, Unreal. You know, obviously, everybody was scared to death of that punch, and he hit him straight on. Yeah. And, and Wilder had it been like, how did he just get up? Yeah. And he didn't just get up. He yeah. came up and yeah. I, did he, he won that yeah, one. He won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a beast. He an animal. But the thing is, well, look how big he is. Look at his know. size. He can, He's well, nimble. He, he can take a punch. He can yeah. give a punch. You know what I'm saying? He ain't the biggest puncher, but look what he did to um to my boy, Dylan White. Knocked him out with that one punch uppercut. Yeah. But he fucks you up uh, visually because he yeah. comes out with like he has a belly and everything, he's but he will story, fuck though, you he's got, up. He's got a life story too that's, you know. Yeah, yeah, he was, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he had some issues too. And, fucking and, nuts. He's, he's gypsy. Fucking nuts. Crazy. He's, yeah. <laughs> Whatever he is, man. He's a nut, crazy, gypsy, psychopath. I love him. Yeah. But I that, love that, him. that dude's Sicko. Deontay Wilder fights for him. Wow. Wow. Wilder hit so hard, man. Wilder, his last opponent, man, he's still asleep. Yeah, yeah. He was going to say Dante Wilder, I mean, all due respect to him, but he, he He's still in Wonderland from the from that fury, man. Nah, nah, he back for that. He just hit a man. He put him. He put that man out cold. So that, really? that man's still yeah. asleep. Nah, Wilder back. Wilder looking good. good. For him. Yeah, he shot him. See, he another hell of a. That's all. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying about. Glad he told me that because I, I didn't. Yeah, I today's I athlete. Watching. Yeah, today's athlete is different because he's so big and strong, and the, the training methods have changed and increased. The food has changed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now they were different men in the sense where they had tougher times. They were going against different things. Where they, we didn't, they didn't have the luxuries we have. So if they had the things that we had, maybe they would be even better. Who knows? But maybe they wouldn't be fighting because it's hard to fight. Like I told you, I got a little bit of money. I was like, I'm, I'm going to hang out. So if they had the same things, now it would take a hell of a man to be a fighter in today's, today's uh, life because the women today are beautiful. Not that it wasn't back then, but they don't look like they look now. The, today's women. They're on social media. Yeah. Forget about it. So if you can make it in today's world with without being distracted true man you a hell of a man true do you think boxing will, will come back to the way it was in the 90s early 2000s you didn't ever come back to that boxing is back man nah it's not, not it is not like boxing it was boxing is back yeah. man you got you got you think you got, it's back man listen not man. like the 90s you got let me not tell you like when you were what, fighting it was never well listen there'll never be another 90s in the sense of um uh, heavyweights. Let me tell you something. Let me that tell you was why. Exactly. All my friends. Let me tell you why. Though. Because of the heavyweights. Let that's, me, right. that's right. My, yeah. One man. One man. One man may change the world. That's Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. He changed the world. Yeah. He changed the entire yeah, world. That one man changed the entire world. Because when Mike Tyson came out yeah. and he was doing his thing, Everybody was watching boxing. Everybody. Everybody wanted to be a, a, a boxer. <laughs> Everybody was like, yo, I'm going to be like Mike Tyson. He was making all the money. He was a psychopath. He was crazy. He was like, he, he made you want to watch it. So uh, there'll never be another Mike Tyson. Everybody wanted to be a heavyweight. There was more heavyweights in the history of, yeah. I think, of boxing in the history of the world <laughs> in the 90s because of Mike Tyson. Because we watched him in the 80s. So by the time the 90s. Yeah. Anyway, I was trying to be a Mike Tyson and try to box. So it was a lot of heavyweights. Going back to that sense, there'll never be another era like that because heavyweights. But, man, the fighters today, they train hard, champ. They train harder than we did. I ain't going to lie to you, champ. They train harder than we did. I, I guess just coming up during that time, like the Tysons, the Briggs, yeah. our boy from Philly. Uh, Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins. Uh, Roy Jones, when he came out, I mean, it was Halo, just not yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holy Field, all that. It was just nothing like it, you know. Uh, for I mean, it's just not nothing like. It. So I, I'm old school. So right. I'm looking back at that, comparing it to now. Right. And back then, you know, it was like everybody. But I feel like the cards were good too. Like, yeah, the cards. Like you got like, like good Even guy. You had to wait to guy. Like am. now, I feel like boxing, like UFC, what they do is. You'll get two undefeated guys that go against each other, and you want to see that because you're like, oh shit! Like boxing, I feel doesn't give me that like, I don't know. Like I want to watch this. Like it's you know thirty two and zero versus thirty two and zero. Like they they seem like they stray away from it in my opinion. Like we want to keep the guy undefeated, so we don't want him to go against another. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Well, it's not. It's true because the reason why is because a, a fighter that's undefeated. Is it's more marketable and it looks good, you know, undefeated record versus a guy who's got thirty-two and seventeen losses. 
uh, 32 and 6. You're like, who beat him six times? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's 50 and 0. Wow, he's never lost. He's 33 and 0. Yeah. You know, 33 knockouts. Who's this? Intriguing, you know what I'm saying? But when a guy's got losses, you're like, oh, well, he's not, he's not, um, He's he's not unbeatable. You know what I'm saying? We want that unbeatable character, uh, like you know, well Mike Tyson in his prom. We want that undefeated record, no no blemishes. He's unbeatable. You know what I'm saying? So that's we we kind of pre paint that Superman picture in our minds. We want our guys to be uh, unbeatable in a lot of ways. So, you know, but I think boxing is back, man. I really believe that. Truly believe. We look at the uh, upcoming fight between Errol Spence and. Uh, but they, and they also don't push it like they used to. I don't see it like they used to. You think so? No, I do not. Crawford, I, Crawford, and, Crawford and Spence got a fight coming up. You got another fight. See, I didn't even know that. I used, to, I used to have thirty thousand friends calling me saying, "Yo, the fight's coming up. Are you coming over? What are you doing now? It's you know, are you into UFC? Uh, yes and no. Not yeah. really. No, not yeah. really. I'm trying to. Yeah. I like Kobe Covington. Okay, he came in. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. You, you're big. You're in. Yeah, I like UFC. Yeah. To, I guess see. I like. Bo I I always have this argument <clears throat> with my my wife's uh, uncle. He's a huge boxing fan, old school. Right. And I did. I love boxing. I mean, you're j growing up, you guys. And I look now. I just and I think it is. It's the heavyweight to me. There's not like Tyson Fury. Awesome. Love Tyson Fury. There's no other heavyweights. <clears throat> DeAndre Wilder. Yes. Correct. But then I'm, I don't see anyone else that I'm like, man, it was like one after the other, after the other, after the other. We just don't have that. I don't know. That's just The Briggs fight, man. We, do. We, we, we had we had a run. Uh, it wasn't called Air and B. We rented. We lied to everybody. We rented. A, we had this guy who was 21 and got a fucking place for us. And for your fight, your two fights. The two, two, two of your fights. We all went. The jungle juice. We were poor back then, man. We we had to get the vodka and, uh, and the cool champ. aid. Let's go, champ. Poor pot, tab eight. This is funny. Or I guess it's nine. Yeah, top nine. You're trolling. What's his name? I can never fucking say his name right. Kalinchko. Let's go. What the hell are you doing with Kalinchko? Oh man, you're a, a rat with that. Let's go. Play, fast forward this a little bit. There it's go. just fun. Vitamin Kalinchko. <laughs> what are you doing? Vitamin Kalinchko. There you go, y'all. Oh, look at There you go. Look at him. Look at him. Same time. What's up, let's go. Everywhere you go, I go. That's right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, you think it's funny? Let's go, Chad. You think it's funny now? Uh, you yeah, think yeah. it's funny? Now go you on, see me. Go to the end. Go to the end. Go to the end. Yeah, go a little bit more. Call me Chad. One more time. Right there, right there. Huh? <laughs> when I cut my foot. Yeah. yeah. What's that? What's that? I say, make a wave. Where is this? Down here? Oh. Yeah, that's the floor. That's right here. Oh. Oh, no, man. oh, he fell off. Oh, fell off. You knocked him off <laughs> with the leg. Oh, man. He knocked, he he knocked him off. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Yo, real talk. Shout out to him. Special man. Yeah. Different yeah. type of individual. We're just having fun. Yeah, yeah. We were just having fun. But listen, he, he, yeah. he over in Ukraine fighting right now. And yeah. uh, he fighting for his country like a real champ. Like a real champion. There he is, man. So aside from being a... Um, a top 25 heavyweight in the world, if not top 15 in the world history, if not top 15, maybe top 25, um, definitely top 25, uh, if not top 15. But an amazing fighter, but he's fighting for his country, man. He went to war. He's over there defending his people right now who be being bombed, who's being, man, Putin putting it on them, champ. Putin making it hard for him. You see what happened with the dam? It don't yeah. Man, he making, he making life hard for them. And uh, a man like that, wealthy man who did great in boxing, put a lot of money away, I'm balls. sure. Yeah, he take balls, take a real, true, a real soldier, a real, a real man. So shout out to him and his brother, man. So yeah, we were just playing around. No, 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 no. No, shit. We, after the war, I'm gonna get him again. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I'm gonna get him again after the war. Hit him with another. Yeah, I'm, another one. Shit, he's lucky. I, he the man, though. He, he a man. Shout out to him and um, shout out to all the people in Ukraine because I watch it on the news and it's sad to see what's happening with them. But you know, 
it's, it's, it's tough, man. It's a tough world we live in, champ. Sudan and the Sudan, all over the world. People going through it. Syria, Turkey, all Africa, over. China. Everywhere's a mess. Brooklyn, Miami. Mm-hmm. Everywhere is a mess. The world is a mess. Not but you know what? It's, but we lucky to be alive. Yep. It's been worse. Yep. We complain it, but it's been worse. So what we got to do is just keep saying, let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. <laughs> go, champ. Pull, pull up uh, Tab 2, uh, Shannon's website. Go ahead and check out his website. Get that merchandise, hashtag, you, let's go champ, right? Yeah, new merch on the way, new merch every day, actually. That's our motto, new merch every day. Every day the goal is to add two new pieces, so check back in, shannonbriggs.com, let's go champ.com. And uh, we're trying to build for the community, man. We're trying to build the community of, of champs, you know what I'm saying? That's the goal is to build a community of champs. So anybody out there is interested in uh, contacting me, hit me up at shannonthecannon at me.com. And we're looking to just build a community of, 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 I'm looking to build a community of people that want to help people. You know what I'm saying? I want to help kids and want to build outreach of champions. You know, I, I, I envision a network of like social media of kids who want to come on and not just kids, adults who we have something to comment. Anyone, right? Yeah, we go on like yeah. FaceTime. We go in and have our group meetings, like, you know, the chance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be great, man. That's like- all it is. That's what it's about. I like it. I, I just like I said earlier. I mean, coaching youth sports. I got two boys. Um, I always say they're spoiled. They don't realize what it's like to grow up and, and <laughs> like we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we grow up. But, I mean, not like. But I mean, I no, do no, a I paper know. route, right, lemonade stand, Me all this too. other shit. But I think what you're doing is awesome, commendable, and Thank I you, wish there were more people. And you know, maybe somewhere down the road, I can get involved with some of the organizations up this way that we work with with the kids and oh you're the best i'd love to i'd love to have you maybe come out one day we'll work something out talk to these kids because there's so many kids i see that they don't they come from a a broken family got a mom working two jobs you know dad either had passed away or he's wherever and they're such good kids and they just need that extra oomph let's go champ that's what they need that's That's what they need definitely i appreciate that and i look forward to hopefully working with you guys in the future yeah Yeah. and um you know that's what it's all about champ just helping helping kids help themselves man be your own be your own gang be your own uh voice in your head that's gonna make you do something positive at least try you know i say this to say uh you know i met a dude one time he was a pimp and uh, I heard, Don but, King. Nah, nah. <laughs> Shout out to Don King. You like Don uh, King? I cool with me. I ain't got no beef with him. <laughs> I, he never stole no money from me. Yeah. I made money with Don King. Yeah. I made money with him. I ain't gonna lie to you. He gave me money. I didn't. I didn't. You know, I worked for my money. We he kept a deal. We we had a deal. We kept a deal. To me, he's funny. Yeah, he's yeah, the he's best coming company. in in a month. Or so. Best promoter I ever lived. Yeah. Um, as long as you got the shit signed right. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, be- you better. You better. But, but that's um, with anybody. Yeah, chat man. I forgot I was going to say. Oh, I'm that. sorry. I <laughs> nah, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Well, just, just what you're doing, like I said, helping the kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it's about, champ. You know, building the community, getting kids out there, um, to self empowerment. Let's go, champ campaign. Let's go, champ foundation. Is about building, like it. and you know, I'm looking to build a. Uh, I'm actually looking for some software designers now as we speak. I want shout out to my boy Matt and his brother Ben. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You no, know, no, no. Do you know, you black want. people without yeah. plugs. You nah, know? do whatever you want. <laughs> nah, shout out want, to my boy man. Matt and um, his brother Ben. And I'm working with those guys and Aaron because those are my guys who I've been working with as of recently to helping me to build my social media. Actually, Matt built this website. And um, pull up the website again. Yeah, Matt built my website, and he's a shout good, out to Matt. Shout out to Matt. His Did a good job. Matt, it made yeah, it simple. Yeah, Matt Matt Miller and Ben Miller. Those guys have been helping me out to get my uh, my social media in order and all that. So you know, I'm, I'm just I'm looking to build an app. Whereas, uh, oh, shout out to the people over at Tivit. Tivit, that's an that's app. I'm talking to them as well. I'm looking to um, build an app. App of champions, you know what I'm saying? Sign up, become a champ, FaceTime with the champions, and the community, all positive, all positive, all positive, uh, you know what I'm saying? All positive app, that's it. Before we go out, play that one, play that, play that. <laughs> yeah, he did a good job. He made the website simple, man. Yeah, he did, he did. Just a quick, there's no Look at oh. him. Oh, I think Aaron did this, this uh, cut. Look at him. That's a nice cut. Let's go, champ. Jeez. There he is. <clears throat>
There he is. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, man. yeah you're the best, man. You're the best, man. Let's Thank go, you for champ. your time. Hey, man, I really appreciate best, it. Man. Make sure Real you come tough. back. Man, anytime, man. Yeah, I love you guys. You guys are good guys, man. I appreciate oh, you guys. Oh, you're a great guy. You know what I'm yeah, I appreciate all your time. You. And let's get yeah. these kids right. And, yeah, I'm a and friendly positive. champ. I come in peace. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. I'm a friendly. It's all about fun. Look at That's this. It. If whoever's watching this, put your hands up to each other again. Look at this size. Oh, fucking wow. I'm sorry. My hands are small, too. Let's go, champ. That's a big fucking Maybe it was good. I stop boxing. That's you know a big I mean? fucking that's, hand. Yeah, that's a big hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go, Jack. Yeah. You guys are the best. Man. Thank you for everything, brother. Thank I really you, appreciate brother. your time. Thank you, brother. And uh, go check out his website. And everything will be in the description, including uh, everything with your son, everything I can do oh, for wow. you. Everything will be in there. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Anything wrong? No, man. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. <laughs> All right.